Wow, excuse me. <coughs> oh my God. Uh, getting a little under the weather. But welcome to the channel, Sparkling Lobster. And we are back at it again. We've been busy as heck today. Um, we've got a lot going on and more than normal. I think I have uh, a tremendous amount of work to do in the upcoming months uh, only for the sake of trying to keep my sanity. I am in the process now of having to relocate. We've been knowing this for a little bit of time and now it has peaked its head and we are in the process of uh, having to move. It's uh, not something that we were ready for yet but we got the notice yesterday and uh, we got until June 3rd of 2020 um, to pack up our stuff and belongings. Hello, Patty. And to move on out. So we got a 90 day notice to quit and surrender possession. Legal notice to myself and my wife, to the occupants and all the others in the possession of the residents of where we're located here. Please take notice that your tenancy and right to possession for the above described residential premises is hereby terminated as of the date 90 days from the service of this notice upon you. You are hereby required to quit and surrender possession thereof to the undersigned on or before the date 90 days after service of this notice upon you or June 3rd, whichever is later. Uh, this is intended as a 90 day legal notice for the purpose of terminating your tenancy. This termination of tenancy is in, in accordance with the California Civil Code section 195.4.535 and is consistent with the California Civil Code requirements and all applicable federal uh, rules and regulations. Basically, it says, um, the reason for the termination is that your owner is selling the property, taking it off the rental market, and a family member will be moving into this rental unit this notice does not waive, modify, or cancel any other notices. Further notice is hereby given at the end of many days. Um, basically, you have to basically move out. So, all right. Well, we weren't prepared for this yet. Oh, you found a plush lobster, Patty. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, they are hard to find sometimes. They really are. Uh, that would be like a find if you find it. I know I've only gotten, I think I have a McDonald's one and the one Kathy sent me from Pets, PetSmart or Petco. So how are you doing today? Are you doing well? Now, where did you find that plush at, Patty? Was it thrifting or did you find it at a store? I got 90 days to get all this done. So we've been looking for houses since we got the 90 day eviction. Um, we found one today, a four bedroom, three bath, 1800 square feet. And, um, 
it's under the market. The um, um, square footage for a rental is about two dollars a square foot. It's pricey, it's very pricey. It's gone up a lot, doubled in the last probably ten years. Um, we drove by the property today, and it's a um, it's a house like where they have I don't know six six of them on one lot. So the pro the yards are very small. There's literally probably I don't know six, twelve feet, maybe twelve feet between the back end of one to the front of the other or the side. I guess because there's the main driveway that goes down the middle. <coughs> Um, so we, we saw that one and that one didn't have too much of a front yard to it. it was a four bedroom, three bath. It wanted twenty nine fifty a month for it, which is cheap for a four bedroom. Um, cause the standard three bedroom is about 26, um, 26, uh, 26 to 2,800. So to find a four bedroom for 29 is, is a pretty good deal. Um, but yeah, these four bedrooms that we're running into, um, that we need, they're well in and above the $3,000 mark per month for rent. It's rent, just rent. Uh, some places are more. I get it. I get it. Oh, excuse me. Pardon me. So yeah, it's a little stressful, I guess. Baby coming around the corner and then trying to get all this stuff organized and then still trying to figure out the taxes and the move and we had it was very stressful I had a kid that was sick I got a birthday today got notified that we're being terminated for my lease and now I'm just getting ready to purge through everything and just we're gonna have uh, there's a lot of stress in the house today a lot it actually gave me a headache i had to go to sleep take a nap i take an old bad nap uh gary what's up man hot mess thrifter saw sheep in here what's up sheep sheep bricks how are you Uh, let's see. So we're just gonna go through our stuff tonight and get ready. I'm not gonna get through it all by no means, but I'm just gonna start throwing stuff out at this point. So the plan that I have um, for the move. So we have to be out by June 3rd is I'm not taking anything. Um, sofa, the table, none of that stuff. Matter of fact, that reminds me. Um, I put the dining room table up yesterday and offer up. Hmm. And the dude is, I don't know, offer up is, they're kind of flaky. Not so much as Craigslist, but they offered me a mount and I haven't heard from them. So maybe they're window shopping. I hate that. It's got to be the worst thing, you know, to sit there and make a deal with somebody. And then you're like, well, you really haven't seen it. So uh, maybe you should come by and take a look at it first before you start lowballing me. Punching me in the in the potatoes. Oh my gosh! I don't even know where to begin. Sometimes, you know. So. Always keeping my head up, brother. Always, every day, every you know. It's. <laughs> I did want to say this today to the wife. But every day I have off, every day I have off, there's some climaxal 
freaking drama that goes on. And today was the eviction notice. What's up, old school? Chris, how are you? Yes. I, I didn't get it. I'm not hungry right now. I'm not sure. So. Okay. Are you okay? You don't, you don't look okay. Yeah, it looks like you've been crying. What's going hey, What's going on? You're having a moment with your daughter? Okay. Do you want to talk? Cuz I'll shut I'll shut this down. Is there anything I can do? Okay. All right. Thank you. <sighs> anyway, we are doing um birthday tonight and uh i think the birthday girl is not happy with the mom so we're we're yeah <laughs> all right i've learned my lesson in all the marriages and kids especially with girls to, to avoid offer assistance um unlike the roadside assistant guy uh, you know, when you break down and you know you're you're standing there as a damsel in distress and um you come by and go is there anything i can do for you and they say no like Cool. Have a nice day. Don't push it. <laughs> so I don't push it. But yeah, that that bothers me because we were really struggling today in time. Um, we had a daughter that had an earache last night, and I went to CVS and I got the kit and I got the kid stuff and I got the adult thing just in case because she's like a five year old, but in an eighteen year old body because she's like four foot two. Um, so I wasn't too sure. And then the adult kit, it had like the little plunger and the little peroxide. So it wasn't really with all this other stuff that they offer in these kits for these earwax removal thing. And that's what the problem was is because I looked into the ear and I could see this buildup. And I thought, well, that's probably what's going on with her. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm going to need Gary. I am. I'm actually going to be... Um, I think the garage has got the most shit. I mean, this is just a wall of stuff, and then behind me are there boxes. So it's going to be relatively easy. But as I was going into um, the before the the discussion of today's events, the the moving process that needs to happen uh, now that we have been given a notice to terminate, uh, we weren't anticipating it being as soon as as it is now. Uh, I just I would have imagined that it would have taken a little bit of longer time for us to kind of sort things out a little easier um, because of the, uh, the time lapse that it would take to sell all these properties. So I guess in this case, the house is being given to one of the siblings and they're gonna move in. So we've got 90 days to get our, basically get our stuff together and move on. The hardest part is finding a, another dwelling that would accommodate the, uh, the family so um yeah the eviction notice was for today uh, the, the owners are selling all their properties and assets here um so that the uh, kids could uh, uh, settle up with the estate so now that the the main holder has passed away uh, you've got the children the grandchildren and all the family going in and, and cashing out so there's quite a bit of property and I think ours is going to be just uh, transferred over to one of the kids. So we're the first ones on the, on the chopping block. So, you know, it is what it is. We would have had to have moved anyway. So I'm positive about this. I'm not, I'm, I'm a little stressed because moving is very stressful, but we have in the last nine years that I've been with my wife, we've moved several times, but it wasn't because we wanted to, it was because we had to. I think the first house we lived in, uh, we moved out of because it was a townhouse, two story. The roof was unsafe. And when it rained, it would leak a little bit, but it got to the point that uh, it was questionable on its integrity. And then that owner sold the property or four townhouses. And a lot of that happens where we live, where because we're at the southern west part of California. Um, it used to be a very affordable community. Um, but now it's starting to amp up and people are coming in and tearing down the old and putting in new. And, uh, you know, I saw two bedroom apartment condos today are renting for $3,200.
it's crazy. It used to be an RV park where these places sit, and now they're just towering over the estuaries. And, it, you know, it's it's new money coming in. And it's a military town. So here's the other thing with that is, like, these rents can go to to the extremes. And when these service members are put into these locations and they're looking outward to the community to, to live, they have um, – they have the government backing them up to a point based upon their rate and how much money that they're allotted with their BAQ and uh, HA or whatever it's called, the housing allowance. Um, they can pretty much afford these rates. So these owners and whatnot are, are, are investors, let's say, are actually putting in this extra effort to, to upgrade these dwellings and they're getting the money for it. So, I mean, I've seen, I mean, I remember... When we first moved into our apartment, it was a two bedroom, big apartment. We were paying like a thousand dollars a month. It was an upstairs apartment. We were like four blocks from the beach and um, that's going for almost two grand now. And then the mom, the mother-in-law lived next door to us and she was paying like 850 for a one and it's for now four fourteen fifty. So I don't know. I do regret selling my house back in the day but it it wouldn't have been um big enough for us i think at this point i would have you know maybe thought of moving in there but that was only a two-bedroom townhouse that wouldn't have that wouldn't have been big enough for us i don't think obviously with the uh additions to the family and uh having the kids uh don't know where we're moving to yet um I got 90 days, Chris, 90 days. Don't know where we're moving to, but we want to stay locally because the kids are here. Um, I've got a lot of convenience here in this town, but if we have to move outward, can't go that way because that's towards the ocean. I mean, we could technically go that way, but we'll see. We went and saw one place today and the way it was set up, it was in the corner on the street uh with one driveway feeding into five other units and there were houses but like i said they were only 12 feet apart from each other so i see that as like glorified stucco trailers in a trailer park when they're that close box houses that's a very common thing here in california they'll, they'll buy a piece of land and they'll maximize to the limit on how many dwellings they'll put on it so this particular lot was probably maybe three quarters of an acre, maybe less, half acre, somewhere in there. Um, and it had, and you got to think, maybe it was a little more, but it was tight. Um, three houses on one side and three on the other. So a total of six, I believe, with one big main doubled, like wide enough driveway for two cars, like a two-lane road. And then the garages were all like facing each other. And then the houses were two-story. And the one we were looking at, we didn't go inside. It was a four bedroom, but we saw the pictures. It was nice on the inside, but here's the problem. So the house sits on the corner and it's on a, a very quiet street, but there's a lot of apartments. And my first thought was parking, okay? We currently have two vehicles and a trailer and I have a sailboat off site. <clears throat> now, at some point, I would think that after I worked really hard to get to that trailer, I don't want to get rid of it. We've only used it once. Um, so the garage is a two car garage, but half of it would have to be used for, right? eBay and Amazon. I mean, come on. Um, and then the other half would be for the car, but that would be rather tight, I think. Um, I don't know. But we'd have to park them on the street. Now, the trailer. I would probably have to store at a, at a storage facility or possibly get rid of it. But I think for what I paid for it in the season that I got it because I was anxious to get it, uh, I don't know if I'm going to, I might just break even on it because it's got some issues. Immaculate on the inside. It's the outside. It's got some issues that I could tidy up um, and maybe break even. But um, yeah, I don't know yet. And I could get rid of the second car, but we're going to need a second car anyway. 
Um, and the idea was to keep the Cadillac because of the fact of the struggles that we've had to maintain it and repair it and keep it rolling. And it was a redemption Cadillac. It wasn't the uh, ideal Cadillac, but it's a 98 DeVille. It's got the worst motor in it in the world, but it runs and it runs well. There's no issues with the motors, uh, with the motor, with the motor. So, uh, yeah, you've moved again too. Mel over there says that she feels her pain. They've had to move within 30 days. Yeah, so we've got we've got some time. I mean, legally, in the state of California, you could live in a dwelling for up to six months past your termination date. But I'm not gonna mess around. Um, there's there's some other behind the scenes issues that I have that I don't want to deal with, and I would just um, I would just assume move on and to move on. And um, you know there'll be some 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 issues with it, but it is what it is. But this place was so much better uh, where we live. And thanks to my friend, um, hopefully he still is. I'm not too sure, but his you know position of allowing us to get this place put us under the rental uh, average, which helped me financially. It got us out of a bad situation prior to this where we had uh, issues with mold. Uh, what that house was doing is, and here's the thing, it's so much sh like shoddy labor going on around here with these repairs that these homeowners, investors don't pay to have contractors come in. They have these handymen come in and, and I'm not saying. Hey baby. What do you need? Okay. Hold on a second. We got birthday cake coming out. Here, let me help. I'm saying about here. You're only four. Okay, well, I thought maybe you did something good. All right. Well, you guys already ate dinner. Now you're eating cake. Are you sure? I didn't eat. You didn't eat, so now you're ready to eat cake. I don't think that sounds very good. Give me daddy. No, 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 no. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do something first, and I think you're gonna. Eat it's probably not a good oh they put mom put the lid on the strawberries the lid? Can you see? yeah one second please let me fix oh yeah look at this you would think hold on i'm gonna drop it oh i don't know if you can see that how delicious does that lid look <laughs> wait a second <coughs> excuse me I cough on it. Ooh, look at that. Yeah, I want to be. How old is your sister today? You don't even know, but you're ready to eat her cake. Okay, let's do this. Okay, we'll be right back. We're going to take this out to the dining room. They weren't even ready for the cake yet. That's my four-year-old manipulating me. She knows that she can get away with everything. Okay. So, where were we? Where were we? Oh, the moving bit. So, the house that we lived in prior to this one um, had a gray water issue with the kitchen sink. And what was happening was the sink water was draining into the underneath crawl space of the house. And the house literally sat on two slabs on each side. And then in the middle was a crawl space where the plumbing would all kind of like run to. So the bathroom and the kitchen were in line with the shower. Then we had another bathroom in the corner. So it kind of tied into the main part. And then all that plumbing went out to the main uh, sewer line. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
So what happened, uh, the, um, the connection to the downspout to the outgoing uh, three inch drain or whatever it was, it wasn't connected. So almost a year of living in that house, all that water was going into the crawl space. And I kept telling my wife, and I told her something about that too, because we had prior to that one, we had another issue. But that house had um, the stench. It was a smell of mustiness. It was, um, you know, so the first thing we did when we went through is I would go through and I was touching the drywall in areas around like the bathrooms. And you could smell the moisture of the, of what I would say mold, but you could smell that, that, that mustiness in the air. And then she's like, oh, no, 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 it's fine. It's fine. And then you also could smell the paint. So they had repainted. They redid some things. So we moved in. And the house was cold because it sat on that slab. And the house is cold here, too, because we have tile. But um, we ended up moving from there. And we were, were the landlord was trying to screw us over and not give us back our deposit because of the um, time that we spent in there. And we went in and we touched up and I took pictures. I fixed the drawers, the cabinets. I was fixing stuff that was should have been fixed that didn't get fixed. He didn't want to spend the time or the money to do it. So we went to Home Depot. We got the exact matching paint. I actually took off one of the doors from the master bedroom cupboard because they had painted over it. And they didn't paint it properly. Um, and it got nicked here and there. So I thought, well, you know what? I don't want to have any issues. So we went down and got a little sampler of it. And all we had to do was like touch it up. And we did the same thing with one of the walls that was kind of questionable because it was so soft in some areas that you could literally take your finger and push into the drywall and it would it would leave a dent. And you're not supposed to be able to do that with drywall, right? So yeah, he tried to screw us on that. So we took him the small claims and we settled right then and there. And he wrote me a check, um, but he we went through the process. And my documentation, my photos, everything I had um, basically told the, the system that, um, you know, we were in the right. So, I mean, everyone has rights, the landlord and the tenant. And then the house before that, um, we had uh, a leak in the back. It was a flat roof house. Uh, I highly recommend you stay away from flat roof homes. I don't even know why they invented them especially in areas where we get a lot of rain. I can see maybe in the desert or something. I don't, I don't know. But this one, it leaked in the back bedroom. And we had the single pane glass windows with the aluminum framing. And those are notorious for building up condensation. And when they condensate, they roll down into the seal. They overfill if the little drain holes aren't properly opened. And they roll back into the drywall. And over time, if it's not properly ventilated, if it doesn't get enough proper sunlight, mold starts to accumulate. Well, what happened in this place, in this case, that was the feeder to what was already going on inside the walls. They had eventually, after we lived there, <coughs> eventually basically just took this like material over the roof and glued it down. So they put a band-aid on top of it. And then they tore out all the drywall. It was the whole cl entire closet in and around, around the window. Then they started doing further testing in the middle room, found that there was asbestos in that one. Uh, they did some other testing throughout the house. And it was mainly in that corner of the house. So they had us out of the house for three months. Three months. This is all with this from that house, uh, from the townhouse with the leaky roof to that house, to the drain, to the drain issue, to now this. Uh, this has all been within the last probably five years, five years. And I've lived like literally a block or two away from each incident. Like, you know, I'm trying, I'm trying to stay within the area because of the schooling. Um, and it's the struggle. And I've went from a thousand to now we're going up to 3000 for rent it's crazy it's insane but we ended up on that house uh where we had the mold in the room we ended up settling with the property management company for some issues that they uh they didn't handle correctly so we got some exchange back on that we settled with the insurance company for some of the um 
uh, furniture, mattresses, things of that nature that were contaminated. We settled with the, uh, uh, there was another agency we settled with on that too because of the health inspection part of it. And, you know, we walked away and we were able to take that money and to replace some of the things that was damaged. And we were able to go ahead and, uh, oh, we got grilling coming. Here we go. Girl? What's going on, man? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. You in your car right now? Yeah. I just saw the thing. I said, oh, I got to I gotta say hello. I know I wasn't invited, but. Yeah, no worries. As I sent the link out. So I want to see how you were able... What's that? Just want to see how you were doing, how everything is going. Oh, I'm, I'm living the dream, bro. <laughs> I know. I sh now, now it's like I'm busting balls, you know. Yeah, that's all right. You can bust my balls. They're pretty thick. You can't. You can't so crack I, them. Yeah, that's that military background. Um, so <laughs> no, that's, the, uh, that has nothing to do with the military background. I mean, it might have a little bit, but it's the whole point of survival, dude. Surviving. Yeah. Um. So how's the how's the weather over there? You doing? Uh, today nice was out? good. Uh, today was good. I spent a lot of the time uh, driving and in the house. Um, but it was good. It was cold. What, this I morning, forgot. What's the biggest city next to you? San Diego. What? What's the big city near you? You said San Diego, California. Okay, I, I didn't that. You know, some you know some people say, "Oh, the area," but I didn't know if there was other maybe mid-sized city near you. Oh, San Diego. Okay. So did you go get your dust mask yet? You know, that's the thing, man. All freaking day on the radio and on the computer. Everything I see, they're canceling all this stuff. Everywhere I go, things are going to be canceled and canceled. It's like, now I'm getting nervous now. Uh-huh. Every time I cough or like, wow, you know, I feel a little warm right now. Now yeah. I'm freaking out. Fever, fever is a symptom. We had a scare last night with one of our little ones where she had an earache and then it turned into a, it's an upper respiratory that she has. So she has fluid, um, but with the, the COVID-19, it's a dry cough and it's a lower respiratory that is affected. So if you're coughing oh, up phlegm or have mucus, then chances are it's up within your cranium that you have an issue with Corona. It's down here in the chest. Oh, okay. Man, that's, I know. That's rough, you know. When kids are sick, you know. Yeah. How old yeah, is the she? First thing, the first thing to check, though, if you've got it, is fever, dude. Check if you got a fever. Yeah. Hundred and two and above is a, is a severe thing. Of course, you don't want to wait till you get to hundred and two, but you definitely anything in and around a hundred, hundred point five, you might want to consider seeking the medical attention. Yeah, but you know what? Always is like this. It's like people, they go, they. They call like the hotline, and there was that yeah. you know on, going around the internet. There was that woman. She went there. She was on hold for like an hour. It's like, what the fuck are we doing over here? There, right. there was a guy who went in Florida. He went to freaking get tested. He had, he he walked in, walked out with a bill for like thirty five hundred dollars. Oh. Yeah, I couldn't even imagine. Like I've had. Uh, we had an urgent care thing today. If we didn't have insurance, I mean, my two little ones have been to urgent care like four or five times so far in the last 60 days. It's insane. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I went to go get the labs done. It cost me $130 to fill out a piece of paper. And then and, it was and, another and 500 you know, And you know what's so funny, too? I'll tell you something funny. We're, you know, on these platforms like eBay and Amazon – they're like, oh, you know, don't, no price gouging, no price gouging. Literally, I remember this about, I don't know, maybe two or three years ago. Remember, remember they, uh, they required all these schools to have the, uh, those epi pens. Remember? Yeah. yeah. And literally, the epi pen price went from a hundred dollars to like five or six hundred dollars overnight. Right. Yeah. Because now, because the schools are required, and I'm like this, and then I'm like. Isn't that the definition of frigging gouging all of yeah. a sudden? Yeah. Yeah, and, my daughter, we uh -huh. actually sent her to school. Uh, she has, she's allergic to egg or something. It's just a child uh, yeah. child thing or something. She'll outgrow it at some point. But the insurance company wouldn't bias the, the name brand one. They got the lower one. 
and it was like four of them for 220 bucks. I'm like, ooh, what a deal. You know? Yeah, and you know what that's the thing is they cost less they said it cost less than five dollars to make. Yeah, yeah. And these ones now, that they now, gave us, now, well, they now, don't now, have now, the now, retracting now, needle. The ones that we gave uh, to my uh, daughter. So we have to have two here at the house and two at the, at the school. They, yeah. The needle doesn't retract. So, you know, when, when you're done using that stuff, you're supposed to be able to have that safety, a safeguard for the people, the first responder or the nurse or, you know, yourself to, to be able to dispose of them. Yeah. But, yeah, I thought that was jacked. I know. It's like, but that's the whole point of the matter is that you know, we had people during Hurricane Sandy when we had it, like a gas station. If they raise their gas more than like ten, like ten percent or whatever it is, the state government come after you with full force. But you, right. if you raise your drug prices or you know whatever it is, nothing. It's like, you know, it's like eh, you know, oh we we raised it. What are you gonna do? You know, you know, you had a point though, because um, the price gouging bit. You know, if you think about it, it's like anytime we have a conflict in the world, gas prices go up. Yeah. Uh, back in September, when we had that bombing in Saudi Arabia on that um, refinery, sure. and they were blaming the Iranians for it, the gas went from like, I don't know, it was like three something here in California, it's like three twenty nine, and then it jumped up to damn near over four dollars. Wow, and you know, it just it just now recently in the last two weeks went back down to three twenty nine. So wow, you, guys, you know, we, you guys pay we, a ridiculous amount for gas. It's crazy, dude. We pay ridiculous for everything. I was just talking earlier. We we're having to move, and the houses that we're looking at, uh, for the four bedroom house, we're looking at over three grand. How much? Like what? Thirty two hundred dollars for a house, for rent. Yeah. Yeah, I, that's the thing. Is like I'm like, I don't have kids, I don't have a family, and it's like, I don't see. I mean, look, of course, I, I took a different path. I went to school, you know, I, um, originally went to school, and you know, I had a different business. The business I did. I ever tell you, I used to own a restaurant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that didn't work out here. I want to see if I can show you here something, but. This is going to make you sick. All right. Tell me if you can see. Can you, can you see? Can you tell me if you can read that? Can you read that? 231. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. $1.79 for E85. Damn you. I and you're on an island. Sick. And you're on an island, dude. Well, we're not on an island. I mean, I'm on an island, but my island is... On a floating know. island, right? In the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> I know. We're not in Hawaii. I yeah, know. I know. Like, well, they, they probably island. pay. I mean, yeah, they probably, you know, Manhattan yeah, is an island, too. You know, you know Manhattan is, is an island. Maybe we might be moving to your neck of the woods. Chris is saying that he paid two oh one. No Chris? kids deal more. Can Canadian, Chris? No, uh, old school picker. Okay. Two oh one. 201. Holy crap. And what state is he in? Uh, I think he's in, hold on. He's in Tennessee, I think. Yeah, Tennessee, things are weird. The prices are, diff are all different. Like, uh, I don't know. Yeah, he's in Tennessee. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's crazy. And here we have, a, we have refineries right off the coast of California right here. We pay a lot. Where are you at? Yeah. You What's getting up? crack again? Oh, you're at the, you're at the <laughs> store. What'd you say? Am I getting crack again? <laughs> you know, buying crack so late at night, dude. What are you doing? Bro, isn't it like five in the afternoon for you? Uh, 7.30, 7.40. Uh, 
What? It, yeah. It's like 740. Yeah. yeah, bro. It just, I just, unfortunately, I just woke up from my nap, which is not a good thing. I no, shouldn't be but taking that. You're a night owl. Well, I was just sorry. I got my hair. Oh, I got you. Got your soda pop. I got my chick fil Yeah. I've never eaten there. You know that? Is it nearby? Do you don't have one near? We just we no, just started we, getting a few years ago. Yeah, we, we have. We have um, a couple of them. I think the... they're really good. You know what? It's like the only fast food that I don't feel so guilty having. I right. had uh, I had a nice Cobb salad, you know, with the egg and the bacon and, you know, with the lettuce, whatever it is. Uh, the chicken is breaded, whatever it is. Right, right. But, it, you know, it's, you know, I felt, you know, I didn't, I, I really wanted the fries, but I said, you know what? <laughs> Let me not have the fries. Because the, cause they're, they're not, because out of all fast food joints, they got the best fries. Hands down. You know. <laughs> now I'm coughing again, son of a bitch. Yeah, you got the corona. COVID-19, COVID-19. It's kind of like that Monsters Incorporated where the human hand ends up touching or they had a sock on the back. and a 24-19, 24-19. <laughs> and also, I just, I just bought tickets. I just bought concert tickets uh -huh. for, uh, two weeks from now. Right, and now now I have to monitor that, like be like, oh, you know, it's in my yeah. Mouth. Oh, so just keep your I'm distance from people. Don't put your hands in your mouth. Um, you know what? What the doctor was telling my wife today with my little one is, yeah. Sneezing. But so what happens if I touch something and then touch my mouth? Then I'm gonna get it. Well, it, it can live on surfaces. I don't know all the details. And by the way, I want to throw the disclaimer out right now. I'm nowhere near being a physician. I don't claim to be. So anything that I say during this uh, the ordeal, don't take it to heart. Um, but what the doctor was saying earlier today is like the sneezing bit. He was going all in detail about 70 miles an hour coming out of your mouth. Uh, sneezing and coughing is where a lot of this is being spread. And um, that's see, Ah, man. Right in my ear, dude. <laughs> yeah, I cough right in your mouth. Yeah, right? Oh. Yeah, so... Just be mindful of not putting your fingers in your mouth. I mean, I say that because I have kids, but I mean, you're a grown ass man, so hopefully yeah, you'll. But if somebody coughs on you and then you inhale that, then it's the same shit, no? Yeah, you just gotta keep. You gotta just protect yourself, and when you're in crowded areas, I guess. I don't know, man. What are you gonna do? I mean, look, I got. You gotta live. You know. Yeah, you do. You can't. Yeah. You can't be going and getting afraid all the time. I guess. Yeah. I mean, we do have. Do you have? Actually, in California, I know you guys are starting to get a lot of cases. Yeah, in the county, just yeah, about a week ago, um, we have 141 cases that we're monitoring. So, the uh -huh, likelihood okay. that they have. I mean, that's. Out of thirty-six million plus people, I mean, yeah, that's not, yeah, yeah, I, that's a, that's another thing too. You can always look at it that way. You could be like, look, <clears throat> excuse me. You could look at it like, look, there's only, you know, if, I mean, God, I know, I know, you don't want to be that person who is the, the victim, you know, but no, of course not. It, but if <clears throat> now I'm fucking coughing, son of a bitch. You want to but, talk about spiders or something so you feel buggy and maybe you'll stop coughing or what? Yeah, I don't talk about no fucking spiders because they're all going to fall down the stairs. No, but what happens is uh, now you just lost my train of thought. What was I saying now? Yeah. What's you it? guys can see? Yeah, I can see you. This is my dungeon. Yeah. So, you, don't have you don't have electricity on yet, so be careful. Yeah, that's the problem. There's things behind everything. The lights... Because when the when the lady comes in, obviously, she doesn't work in she doesn't work. On it. She only works in the daytime, obviously, because she's a normal person, you know. Right. <laughs> so what you're saying is you know, not normal. Uh, no. Far <laughs> from normal. Yeah. I think a lot of us are that do reselling. I have to admit, yeah. I prefer to work at night anyway. That's just my take. <coughs> 
Now I'm fucking caught, but now you got me, you son of a bitch. Yeah, I got you. I'm busting your balls the hard way. Now I'm coughing. Yeah. Oh, shit. Bags of balls. See? So then here, this is... When I come in, this is what it looks like. Yeah, you got to be careful. Shoot. It's like an obstacle course. That place is packed, bro. Yeah, well, um, what was I going to say? Um, now, is this a thrift store or an antique shop? It's an antique shop, isn't it? Okay. This here. <clears throat> son of a bitch. Okay, you see up there the darkness? Yeah. I just came from out of the darkness, right? All right. <clears throat> Now, I just came from out of the darkness, and then here is the um, what is it saying? Here is the regular, which we'll call it. Here, this is a thrift store. Okay. 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 Then, once you go through these these gates, this is an antique booth. Uh, okay. So, this guy Matt, who's you know my neighbor, obviously now, he runs this antique booth, but a lot, but he doesn't know. Sometimes he keeps it open. Sometimes he locks it up. <coughs> it depends. You know. So, hey, you got a cage. You got, you know. They know his lights. You hear them go. Ch -ch 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 -ch. So. And then. Bastard. Kid. See you, Mel. Come on back if you can. People don't want to talk about this corona. They want... Does Australia have corona? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Australia, oh, you know Australia, what? Australia is a very sensitive habitat over there. There's, there's, I'm sure they don't. They, no, they I, don't you know what? Allow... Honestly, I heard today on the radio, <laughs> the lady says, oh, it's, oh, it, uh oh, did you just cough? Yeah. That's an upper respiratory issue. <clears throat> I don't know what the fuck it is. But anyway, um, this lady on the radio, she says, oh, it's on every continent. Well, except Antarctica. I just, uh, I wanted to slap this person. Antarctica, yeah, right. like, like the, you know, like, like it, I think it's safe enough to say if it's on every continent that you could say it's on every continent. You don't have to say, oh, well, except Antarctica because there's no freaking people living there, you idiot. What, they have a, couple of hundred scientists there or something like testing yeah, out there's, for there's some people up there from different parts of the world yeah some scientists there figuring freezing up freezing their ass off you know freezing their balls off you know that's not so then this is my my room this is my death pile i gotta get to it one of these days you know there's another death pile these are actually pretty high up so you see, I put my arm out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's not it's not quite eye length. Just, just, oh, and the lights keep going out. Wow. Who, who, is it Tommy? Is in the room or no? I haven't seen him. Yeah, because I got to ask him questions. But you know, I don't want to break his balls too. Not break. You know, I don't mean break balls. I just mean like you know, ask questions, but. You don't want to ask people too many questions because then after a while you get like, you know, he's going to say, what do you think I have, a Patreon? You know? Just want to ask him some questions. I, I shop at this store here, Century 21. I'm sure you probably, I don't think they have them on the West Coast. No, they're uh, real estate agencies uh, with that uh, with that branding, Century 21. Yeah, yeah, they do. They, they we, have the, we have Century 21 also, but um, this, they opened about in the 21st century. Uh, in like 2000, they opened. Um, and they sell, they're like a, a higher end TJ Maxx kind of. Like it's like a nice store. It, it looks like a department store, <clears throat> but it's really nice. So I got some blazers, brand new. You know, they don't, and a couple of them were real expensive. Yeah. 
I know you don't really do clothes. Well, you, I see you doing a couple. I do pieces. a couple things, uh, but not to the extent where I could open my own like clothing retail shop. Wow, well, you, you got quite a bit there. Yeah, wool silk PA. I don't even know what PA means, but this is nice. But I bought some of this stuff. Sometimes what's good about this store is that they got stupid employees. Not, I mean, not stupid, you know, careless employees. <clears throat> And they, they, they mispriced some of this stuff. So I got this jacket here. Nice jacket. You see this, this blazer here? Yeah. It's a really expensive brand, Luciano Barbara. I got this jacket for 75 bucks. I mean, this jacket's like two grand. Wow. You know? So, so what did, you, eBay, did we like, just pick it up or something? Or What's up? Did you just pick that up, or is that something that's just been hanging like that in the front? No, 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 no. I did, I don't. I don't have the. This, that's not a death pile item, you know. Luciano Barbara is not a yeah, death pile. But I was thinking, why wouldn't you have had it in like some sort of plastic dry cleaning satchel bag of some sort? I did this bag here. I just got it. Oh, okay. I, that's I the just Century Twenty One. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Is it, I got it you. So this. Um... <coughs> so anyway. Yeah, they mispriced it, or maybe they put the wrong number in. They, you know, the lady had to put this number in here, and maybe she put the wrong freaking number in. You know what? I don't know. And guess what? I don't care. I just asked the lady, "Oh, how much is this blazer?" Because there was no price tag on it. She had to mm -hmm. punch it in. She's like, "Oh, uh, seventy-five dollars." I'm like, "I'll take it." You know. And where's that made in Italy? Yeah. Hmm. Nice. Yeah. Like nice. <clears throat> was it 56 as I saw, huh? I'm sorry? That was a 56? Yeah, that's the size. That's an Italian yeah. size. Yeah. So <clears> it's, like a, it's like an XL. It's like an XL. Okay. You know, it's like a... Like a What's that blue and red and white one right there? What's that, a throwback? <laughs> to your right. Okay. Go to your right. Just turn, what? turn. Keep going right there, that blue, red, and white. What is that, a pullover? This here, yeah, it's one of those uh, New York Giants. Giants. Stars. Okay. I'm surprised. Some of the other teams do phenomenally yeah. well. Yeah. <clears throat> like Eagles and some other ones, the Giants. Yeah. yeah. They don't do shit. And it's got, I mean, this one, it's a little dirty, not too bad. <clears throat> but here, Giants in the back. And I just picked up this jersey too. I don't know. Do you like jerseys? Uh, I don't wear them. But this year, but I'll you know sell them if I know that they're going to do well. The Raiders? Number, yeah. Number 18. This is a big jersey. 58. I think it's a big size. Mm. That'll do uh, well. This is, this is uh, Randy Moss. Yeah. When he played, yeah. Also, I picked up with that lot. You should. I'm surprised you should find this out where you are in California, but I'm sure people are going for it's this. This is vintage, like surfing Sun kind Tux. of stuff. Yeah, they do well. I never heard this brand. Surf fetish? No, I've got some vintage surf shirts that I've got um, tucked away that I'm holding on to just so uh, I get sorted out better where I can do that and uh, keep them keep them. Uh, piling up so i can do like a series of them or whatever but yeah they do well what is that one is it oh excuse me it's another brand never heard of it's um called catch it mm. you know then i have this I know, one this of the vintage ones that my grandfather used to sell when he uh was around uh he owned a shop like a surf shop, and it was Gotcha. Yes, Gotcha, gotcha. does well. Yeah, they don't. Do they make any more clothing anymore? Not sure, but I pick. I pick up Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. This did I, did I show you this jersey right yesterday? Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, that's the signed one. Yeah, I'm gonna put this up for auction. I think. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Um, you should, you mentioned something about that being a player that's not well renowned, but still with a game jersey signed, that should yeah. do quite well. Yeah. 
at least yeah, for, a, is- for a Nets fan. Is that a Nets fan? New York Nets or whatever? No, what Knicks, is that? The Knicks. Knicks. Knicks, okay. Knicks, Nets. That was close. Depends on how Harper. you spell it. <laughs> yeah. Harper. Grillin, uh, I got a question in the chat. Are you a uh, full-time uh, full-time uh-huh. reseller? Okay. I became a full-time reseller. Oh, man. I think this is my fourth year now. Uh, my fourth year is a re- fourth or fifth. Oh, my God. So hard to keep track now after a while, you know. I um <clears throat> I I was just saying, I think this is my fourth year now, full time. But I was actually doing better when I was working and were and reselling part time. Yeah, that's what I do. You know? That's what I sh- that's what I should I should go back to my old job. That would be smart. You know. because uh, I you know, my old boss wants me to go back, but you know what it is? It's real it's really, it's really hard to go back to work, especially if your old boss is an asshole. Yeah. You know, it's very, 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 very hard. You know, I mean, I would go back if I was like, you know, if I had a family, I would go right back. Uh, you know, you made me think of something right there for a minute. And I'm, I'm not saying I wish I was on the other side, but if I was not um, in a position to have as many responsibilities as I have, which then you I love dearly. Really, I'd be one rich ass motherfucker. <laughs> I'd have no, to say that. Yeah, but no, but. but you gotta remember, <clears throat> you probably wouldn't be as motivated to go to work. Oh no, I would. I would. I would. Nah. I would. Yeah, because I can't sleep. I stress about the little things. I wouldn't be surprised if I croak one day from an ulcer. Yeah, but if you didn't have all those responsibilities, you you probably wouldn't work as as much. Well, I'd probably cut back on at least one job. But Trust reselling, me, re- reselling, I would not cut back on. I would, I, I would be pushing it ten yeah. times. Look, I say that to myself every day. You know what? If I just got all this stuff listed, and I just did this and I just did that, then I'm like, yeah, you know what? Let me take a nap. I'm so exhausted. <laughs> well, let me go watch YouTube. <clears throat> let yeah. me go watch this. Let me go watch. A, I took like, a nap. So- I took a nap today. I took a, a little two hour power nap. I needed it. My my head was killing me. Right? I think I still have one of the uh, the aspirin. It was. I asked my wife. I was like, oh, "Do we have anything?" She comes in with these two pills. I'm like, "What is this?" She goes, "They're 500 milligrams a piece." I'm like, "Well, I can't take a thousand. You're gonna blow up my liver or kidneys or whatever the hell it is." I think I got it in the kitchen. But it was like a thousand milligrams. I'm like, "I'll just take one," and it it did me right. So it was hurting my head. <laughs> my liver. Ugh. I got all this shit. Now what to do? Now I gotta now I gotta process. That's just the only thing is you know. <clears throat> I mean it's I like I love having this dungeon down here, you know. Yeah. I can rely. I can work. I, even though you know what I was thinking to myself like when I before I got this like oh my god, uh, I'm gonna be cranking out so much listings, so many listings because I mean I could literally work in here all night and do you know. But it's just like, eh, let me relax. Eh, I want a nap. You know, dumpster diver dad. You know, I, I want to take a nap. I want to take a nap. Hmm. You know, you don't get, and you know, when I have my other job. But then again, you know what? I hated, you know, when you, when I worked in the restaurant, for people who don't know, restaurant business is good in the sense where you can make good money very fast. Yeah. You know? You can make a lot of money, but if you're if you're working as a waiter or bartender in the right place, you can do very well. Mm. And you know, if you're a guy that works in the kitchen, mm. you have a lot of security because it's very hard to find people. Who it is work. that stick that stay there, but uh, pay wise, I mean, um, you know, it's not the greatest. But at the end of the month, between working in the kitchen and cleaning that place, when I do it, um, it it's a nice little chunk of change. I have to admit, and steady, it does. Steady, steady. It, yeah, it has gotten us out of the holes, especially in the last three or four months that we've been seasonal with my other job. Um, yeah. You know, I've managed to pay my bills just just skimming through. And if I had to rely on, uh, you know, Amazon and eBay, because I don't touch my Amazon money, and I don't I don't want to, and that's why I work at that restaurant. 
to, uh -huh. to maintain that that stability of being able to provide but man i'll tell you it's tough work it's taking a toll on me yeah yeah because this is not like I, i've been busy cut let like you know like the last week i've been pretty busy i've been decently busy but then like the last two days all of a sudden dead and then today i i'm today i'm in the negative i had like three people open returns mm -hmm. so i'm like son of a bitch yeah you i've know? got one pending that they were supposed to have back on the second and it hasn't been returned yet. I haven't received it, but I'm not going to grant them because in the email that eBay sent me, it basically said that a buyer has a return for $12.99 for a 1969 realistic RCA transistor AM FM radio. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's temperamental. And it even said that in the description that it may sold as is no warranties. It may have issues, but it does work. But they're but did, focusing did, on the word drop down for parts or repair. What's that? Was is there a when you did the listing? Was there a drop down for parts or repair? That's what I'll usually do. Oh, I don't know. I sold it as used, vintage. And okay. what I was thinking, what I was thinking is the first thing that came to mind is they took it apart and took whatever they needed out of it, and then they're going to send it back. But you know, for twelve ninety nine, I mean, I could easily return it, but I want it back because I know it works. So I haven't, I haven't granted the return and it said in the email that if i go ahead and grant the return before the second of march that i shouldn't expect the item back and i'm like wait a minute since when did that change yeah because yeah. amazon doesn't even work like that amazon will give the customer their money back but you can select in your account to have them not do that it has to go through you first and yeah. then you can say yeah. okay listen once i get the item I will yeah. return it. I've only had a couple of returns, three returns in 14 months from Amazon. One wow. guy all the way from uh, Kentucky sent it back and I gave him his money. The other lady was complaining about these dust, dust like accumulated water like spots on the rims of a bicycle that I sold. And so the bike? I told her, yeah, in the box. I got them at Walmart for like $24 and I was popping them for $149. What? What kind of bike? Yeah. It was like uh, one of those little, little like kids huffy bikes or whatever. They're, they're in the box. So all you have to do is put the wheels on and the handlebars and the seat. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I shipped it out just like that. I ended up telling her to keep it. I didn't want to hassle with it because she wanted to send it back because she said she didn't open it, but she noticed that there was problems on the rims. I'm like, well, how do you know that? Because it's in a box. I mean, did you look through the little handles that are there that you, you can grab when you carry it? So, anyway, it only cost me $24. That's awesome. Yeah, that's, you get some good deals every now and again. Yeah, I was just, you know, it's funny because I was just at, I, I mean, I, I wasn't at Walmart. I was at a place that was next to a Walmart. And then I'm like, should I go in? I'm like, I hate Walmart more than anything. Yeah, I don't but like Walmart. What? I'll go there if we we desperately need something though. But I'll go somewhere else. I, I like to support the local mom and pop shop. Yeah, and it's just such a gross. It's it's freaking gross in there. I mean, is it really like you? All right, now like consumer staples. I mean, do you pretty much know how much everything costs? That like like if you need to buy syrup, like do you do? I mean, how good are you with that? I mean, because I know you're busy doing a lot of stuff. But are you guys like on top of things? Like, yeah, like, I mean, want? I know where to go to get certain things. <laughs> like we go to Costco to only get certain items. We we'll go to the local grocery store. The local markets uh, are where the deals are. I actually shop at the local Mexican markets to um, supply my Amazon. I don't do that much from Walmart or anywhere else. Yeah, like if I says, where's the best place? Like you guys buy like Tide. Like where's the best place? To, you know. You know, right For away. For me to buy Tide, it would probably be, uh, depending on how much I needed, uh, it would be at Costco. Yeah. Unless there's a sale, you know, at the pharmacy or at the CVS, sometimes they'll run a sale on the liquid Tide with they get those small bottles for like two ninety seven. Sometimes you can get it for a dollar eighty eight, and then really? I always keep the coupons uh, where you spend like thirty dollars, you get six dollars off or something like that. So I'm always shopping like that. Yeah. Always shopping with coupons. See, I should I should be more on top of like those prices because that's what I do at home. I, I'm the one that buys the uh, 
I buy the I buy all those kind of products for the house. That's my contribution. <clears throat> is to buy all those, you know, garbage bags, the freaking, you know, the uh, all that kind of stuff. The, right. You know, I, you know, my parents are older, so like I buy, you know, the uh, like the heavier stuff. Like, so I'll go to like, you know, BJ's and I buy the um, the what you call it, like the um, extra large paper towels that it's like this big and right 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 and the, and the, the cat food is very heavy those bags that, you know you know my mother couldn't carry those bags yeah so yeah we go to costco to get the cat litter it's like 42 pound bag for like nine dollars and 79 cents it's the best deal yeah, it's, it's, yeah it is those you, yeah bj's it's really I mean, cheap too you could go to walmart and get the clay kind of like Cat litter, yeah, I got it's plate. like five dollars, but it's it's dusty, and with the yeah. wife being pregnant, I don't want all that stuff going on. Yeah, if it's too dusty, no good. Yeah. So who else is in the chat? Why don't you do a little uh, roll call? Ah, uh, we got Nana Tink Treasures. She's in here. You've got oh, <laughs> there's Tommy. Go ahead and ask ask oh, a question. Tommy. <laughs> Tommy, I was going to text you today. Did he just jump in now? Yeah, he just jumped in. 8.04 p.m. He's late. He's behind the powerball. Yeah, Tommy, I bought these blazers from um, – <clears throat> see, I got this one. Then I bought – this is another one. This is uh, This is another brand, Paul Smith. Okay, and this one here I got it was uh, you know, like it's like TJ Maxx, you know, it goes down and down and down. Original price seven hundred, I got it for forty. Then here, this is another Luciano Barbara, which I don't even know what color this is. I guess it's like a beige. I don't know. And this one here, see ninety nine bucks. So I scored pretty well with these. You know. Made in Italy, you know. Beautiful thing. So what I wanted to ask Tommy if he's listening, um, I remember we kept talking about the. Um, so oh, there you go, there you go, lobster. Yeah, sorry there's, about that. There's websites that I haven't had figured out, and I know Tommy is more familiar with it than me. I wanted to know if he could find it for me. I, I've been going to this place to get some discounts and I, I'm not sure how to use the websites. There's websites that have discounted gift cards. And I was like, Oh shit. You know, how do I figure them out? How do I know? Uh, Cause some are not good. Some are like in store only some like you have to have apps. You know, I just want the gift card so I can go into the store and just buy the item. You know what I mean? So, cause sometimes they're, Sometimes it's only discounted like two or three percent, the gift cards. But sometimes I've seen on certain ones, like on Gift Card Granny. Have you ever heard of that website? Yeah. Yeah, Raise. But I yeah, I didn't look on that. I don't know. So if Tommy, if you go, I, but Tommy, do you, when you go to your TJ Maxx, you you always go with the gift card, or once in a while, or what? Hold on. Yeah, wait for Tommy to respond. I put I put the link in, maybe he'll jump in. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see what Tommy does. I guess you could talk about all this stuff, I don't have to wait for him to respond. <laughs> he I'm says uh, it's not always, but he tries for sure. Yeah. I know because I, I wanna if but Tommy, if you could find one, if you can go on there, I mean, you know, if you're not busy, if you could find one for that Century Twenty One, that would be good. Because, you know, something where I could just buy it and uh and then if I could save a couple of dollars, if I could get like fifteen, twenty percent off. 
that would be a lot of scratch, you know, because I, oh, yes, I wonder, um, you know, because I spent like, I spent like two hundred twenty five dollars here, you know. Yeah, so right. If I could have got it, had a fifteen percent off gift card, you know, that would have been, uh, you know, thirty five bucks, whatever it is, you know. Are you gonna get that on there tonight? What's up? You're gonna put that blazer on tonight? Yeah. Well, I got I got a few of them, and then even one I got from yesterday. There's another one. This one's a little bit nicer. This one's real nice. And this pattern, this plaid, is very popular now. This year. Hey, Tommy was saying, um, same with Ross and all. Then buy them with your business credit or PayPal. You get okay. the cash back that one percent. Yes. You know, I feel so. I, I feel like such an idiot. PayPal sent me a card, and I didn't do nothing with it. Ah. I never act because I don't. I don't buy stuff with my PayPal. I take the PayPal. I transfer it to a business account, and then do it out of there. But but you're right. If I'm getting, was it? We say reward. Is it like a rewards? Yeah, it's one percent. Okay. All right. Yeah, I usually pay um I pay bills with it. Um or I'll go to Walmart. Yeah, but and you, then you, uh you, if I go to Walmart to get something for the house or whatever, even though I don't want to go there, yeah, but I would draw my money at the checkout. So I don't yeah, get that fee not, or like you get not, when you go to ATM. But you're not supposed to use the PayPal card for your personal stuff. Oh no! If I have to get something for the house, I, I write everything off, dude. I'm not going there to buy a candy bar. No, but I'm saying is if, if you if you the business card the PayPal card is for business expenses. Yeah. So it's not like I was saying. If I pay a bill or whatever, if I pay the electricity or something of that effect, or if I yeah. go to um, Walmart. You get something for the house, I'll I'll go and I'll use the PayPal, thinking I'll get that one percent back. They're not major expenses, but I'll withdraw whatever cash money that I want to keep my account to a minimum because I don't want to have too much money in that PayPal account. No. That way you don't get dinged for that fee that they get you at the ATMs. Yeah. So you just transfer your, your money from PayPal straight to your business account? Yeah, that's what I do is I transfer it to um oh, I got the buttons in here. That's the thing is when you buy very expensive jackets, they don't have the buttons. They have to, I got the buttons here. Yeah, that's what I do is uh um what I do is um what's I gonna say? Uh I um what was I saying? Okay. Yeah, what I do is I just transfer it over. You know, Thomas from says like, you got two hundred dollars back every first of the month, the cash deposit. Yeah, I've yeah. gotten I've gotten a lot less than that, but because uh, I would, well, yeah. yeah. I got so I got so much. You know what it is? It's like, you know, I'm, I mean, I'm just freaking complaining and 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 bitching and moaning, but you know what? When I look at these mountains of shit that I have, I'm like, you know what? I got to get the stuff listed, you know, but I should have that. I should be doing that. What the hell is this? <laughs> it, is, it is pretty big, man. Look at the size of this thing. Yeah. It's look like a 3X this. or what? 4X? I don't know. Tommy, what size is 58 Reebok jersey? Holy shit. It's like a 3X. What do you mean? 58? That would have been for the equipment, wouldn't it? That's not... You mean... It, what do you mean? For it to be that big? <clears throat> well, no, this isn't the real one. This is the this is a Reebok one. This isn't... Oh. This isn't that... Oh, are you kidding me? I wish this was that. Holder pads? Yeah, right? No, this is a replica. The, the Reebok ones are actually kind of cheap. They're not really that great in the... But it, it's nice because it's sewn. You know, the, the numbers are sewn on. Right. 
in them, but it's nicely sewn. I could tell it's real. That's one thing you can kind of tell, you know, when it's, you know, it's usually pretty ni nicely sewn in the inside. Not that these are big, that these Reebok ones are not very expensive, so they're not big. I think they're less than like a hundred bucks brand new. But this is nice. You don't even like this, love? You don't want to walk around with this jacket on? That's something Robert De Niro would wear. Yeah. yeah. This is a nice jacket here. This one is a size 54, which is like a large. Tonight's video was brought to you by Subway. Thank you, Subway. Actually, they should be thinking me. <coughs> Excuse me. Wool silk. <coughs> Wool silk cashmere. Beautiful thing. I'm gonna list this puppy for like four or five hundred bucks. Beautiful now you guy. check comps before you do all that, grill. Uh, on these, I don't even have to because these. This is like I knew super expensive. You know that particular brand. Doesn't hold up its value that much, but it's so expensive. It you know it's literally, like I said, this jacket's probably eight like eighteen hundred bucks. You know, so even if I got two fifty, I'm still doubling my money. Right. Know? I only paid a hundred for that jacket. You know, and the other one I paid less. The other one I paid seventy five, and this jacket here I only paid like, what is it? It's forty bucks. You know, this is like a peach. Yeah, it's Miami Vice, dude. Yeah, so exactly what I was gonna say. This is for the spring, the summertime. It's uh, cotton and linen. Where's that made? Where? Portugal. 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 So is Tommy going to jump huh. in or what? What's that? Tommy's going to jump in? No. He's just, he still hasn't gotten dressed. He's probably sitting behind his computer in his chonies. Now he's something about he needs to eat. Uh, oh, oh, he took a nap. So everybody yeah. took a nap? Everyone took a nap today. Today was nap day. See, that's the problem is now, now I feel like, you know, like, oh, it's not that bad to take naps. If because Tommy took a nap, it's okay now. <laughs> well, you took a nap too, you said. Yeah. So if ev if know. everybody takes a nap, everyone's taking a nap. You know, you should have all right. Everybody in the chat, press one if you took a nap today, or if you take a nap usually. I take a nap as much as I can. Was it nap Only because I can't sleep during the night, dude. Uh, I don't know if it's because I'm getting older. I know. How old, oh, you said you're 50? 48. Okay, all right. You're getting there. Today was National Nap Day. Oh, shoot. Today was a what? What day? Did take a nap. She went to sleep. She, they're hitting twos. <laughs> a what would you say? A what day? Today was National Nap Day. Come on, you're full of shit. No. I guess that's a holiday they celebrate in Delaware. Yeah. What's he going to say? Is this nice sweater. Vineyard vine. I don't know. This brand cooled off. This brand used to do a lot better. Yeah, it used to do a lot. That was a Target uh, collab, wasn't it? Not this particular one, but they, they no. do... You know, but this one for some reason they only had it at Salvation Army. It was like five ninety nine because yeah. usually Salvation Army they only they lower the prices low when it there's something wrong with it, and you know, and and it was not only um, which we'll call it. I mean, I know this is only a plain one; it's not that expensive, but it was only five ninety nine. 
and it was uh, what was the same. And I got it on a hand four. So, so now I got to do the measurements. Do my first measurement, the chest measurement. It's kind of small for a long time. It's been years since I've been to a Salvation Army. Oh, you guys don't have them in California? No, we do. So why don't you go? Convenience and time. Yeah, so what's your, what's your work schedule? Oh, it's crazy. Friday through Tuesday, um, from like, I get up at 5.30 and then Fridays, Saturdays, yeah, for every day I get up at 5.30 to go in to one job, which only lasts like an hour, an hour and a half, but you're having to get up so early. Because then I got to come back here and, you know, meet the kids and take kids to school. Do dad then stuff. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I work during the day. And then Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday night, I work until like uh, anywhere between 10 to 2 a.m. And then that, that's when you do the That's the restaurant. The 2 a.m. Oh. oh, shit. Now, what kind of restaurant is it? It's a local. It's a. It's a it's bar a restaurant. Like bar and grill. Yeah. Okay. Burgers and beers, kind of stuff. Bears. Hmm. Yeah, that Copper work. State. That was fun. With the uh, antiques you guys were doing. Yeah, I was on a. I was on a live earlier where they were doing trivia on antiques. Oh, nice. Now, where is Copper State? Uh, Arizona. Okay. They're in Arizona. They uh, they, they do <laughs> storage lockers. Usually, I kind of know those, you know, uh, state nickname kind of things, but I, I, for some reason, I didn't know what Copper State is. No, it's just the uh, avatar name for another channel. But I'm saying they're not called the Copper State. You know, no, know. but that's their, that's their handle. Yeah. Is Tommy still in the chat? Yeah, he's Wait. he's lingering. He's a troll. Yeah, I wonder how he's doing with those other uh, lists perfectly. If he's if he's li perfectly listing or if he's given up on that. I don't know. I gotta know before I before I hit that affiliate link. If he's got if he figured out all of the uh, glitches. Well, we'll see if he responds, <laughs> Chris. I crash out about once every couple of weeks and sleep half a day. I do that, but then I always have somebody knocking on the door going, oh, there's a fire. What? Fire. Yeah, I always refer to, like, all the things I do extra on the side. I should have been a firefighter. Oh. <laughs> always, always issues every day. You know, I was watching a thing today about Kurt uh -huh. Cobain. Sure. And I never really paid attention to it, but they're saying it's possible that he was murdered. And the reasoning? Uh, the linguistics of the letter that he left behind, of the writings. Uh -huh. uh, the last four lines didn't match. Like somebody else... or Wait, the last four lines... We're in a complete match or something with the last four sentences or whatever. And how he was laying there for up to 36 hours before oh his body was even reported uh, being dead by the electrician, which was called in by his wife, Courtney. So she hadn't seen him in 30 hours? No, it was a, a thing where she was somewhere else. Or portraying to be somewhere else. And then her lawyer at the time, or their lawyer at the time, had some hand in it as far as holding evidence. And uh, she hired a private investigator herself to look into uh -huh. the actual uh, 
suicide attempt that they're claiming that Kurt Cobain had done. And uh -huh. there was possible evidence leading that it might have been a murder. Uh -huh. Because of the note, it wasn't all written by Kurt. They, they had two like linguistic specialists look at it. And they uh -huh. both concluded that the uh, writings were written by two different hands. Wow. It's like thin and then rock stories. It's like then, um, apparently Courtney left a backpack at uh -huh. the lawyer's house, didn't come back for it. So the lawyer started digging through it and found yeah. papers with her handwriting. Yeah, papers with her handwriting in it that match the similarities of the handwriting of the note. <laughs> So the suicide note, and then there yeah. was another one where she was practicing the alphabet of Kurt Cobain's writing. Uh huh. And then there was one that said, uh, there was a note that said, "Get arrested." After Kurt Cobain was found dead, Courtney Love was arrested for uh, drugs paraphernalia, uh -huh. which the cases were dropped shortly after. So those cases never stuck. With the uh, charges of, uh, hey, what's going on? What do you got going on there? Green hair. Oh, no. <laughs> Why do you have green hair? <laughs> what is all this? Not green. Mm. Okay, did you have cake yet? Yeah. Okay. So why don't you go back inside? Here, do me a favor. Be a chap. Here. Take the plate and put it in the sink. I'll be in in a minute. Come and get me when you guys do cake. We got a birthday today. Yeah. Oh, we got a cake right now? All right, Grillin. You're going to have to entertain for a minute. Oh, you want me to stay on? If you want. If you, if you want me. My, yeah, actually, I'm, not, I'm, I, this, I'm, I'm only on 18%. I'm going to die here. So right. you got the I'm gonna go have a, a real quick happy birthday song. All right, maybe I'll so, back you know, I'll all right, be brother. back. All right, I'll dude. You, brother. all right, Peace. so guys, I'll be right back. I'm gonna go say happy birthday to the little one, or she's not so little, but anyway, I'll be right back. So, uh, we'll Ooh, there's too many elves. Uh... We'll be right back. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Uh, I think we have one here. Okay. All right. Get my happy voice. Happy birthday voice going. All right.
We are definitely being pulled left and right today. So, well, we are back, 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 back. Uh, sorry about that. We had a little, we had, uh, beautiful cake, by the way. I didn't get a piece, but I will later. I will later fall show. Anyway. If you guys didn't uh, know, that was Grillin. He's uh, over there in New Jersey. And he's uh, got himself a little area where he works out of to sell his clothing. Uh, a lot of suits. And uh, I think we saw some extra little additional uh, items that he sells with, like, the jerseys and things of that nature. So, yeah, that's that's uh, that's a tough that's a tough little situation to be in. I think in my case, uh, I don't have space for that, for all that clothing. So, but, you know, in time, in time, we'll see uh, if we can just get uh, life to stop throwing me curveballs. I think I will be just fine. So anybody else who wants to jump in, feel free to do so. I'm throwing the link up. Just pop in there. I don't know who you are, though. Um, uh, oh, the, uh, <laughs> the costume idea. So here's, here's, here's what I've got planned for this. The question that you've asked. Um, I intend to go to Amazon and buy this costume that uh, has been brought up on a live that I was in. And it's a great concept, a great idea. I had thought of something of this before. And with the twist of the costume, I think it would be ideal. So here's what I'm thinking. I am thinking of getting a lobster costume, putting it on, and um, going to a thrift store and, you know, not getting too crazy with it. And, trying, you know, obviously I can't say, oh, I don't want to have too much publicity on it because I'm going to look like an idiot with this thing on. But the idea is... To support the channel you know and i'm not hurting anybody but the other idea too is i thought of standing on the corner of an intersection with the suit on and a sign that i'll have make uh that i'll have to make uh that'll say like youtube creator subscribe sparsoomling lobster and i'll be out there like you see a lot of time people that are hard out um bad on their luck <clears throat> where they're holding signs saying various things. And in this case, it'll be for publicity for the channel. You know, in the past, I thought about doing the similar thing <coughs> uh, with a suit on and just to throw some positiveness because I've actually seen people uh, throw money at these people on these corners um, for handouts. And I thought it would be funny years ago. I thought of doing the same concept, but flipping it to a positive thing and go out there broomed, dressed, tied out, uh, dress shoes, the whole nine yards and a suit or a blazer or whatever uh, with a sign that says uh, educated individual, not seeking employment. Um, you know, you just give a list of things. God bless. Don't need food. Whatever the case is. Have a good day. Yeah, you know, just something positive, something different. So I might do that even too on the channel. I don't know. I maybe do that in a in a lobster suit. Who knows? <laughs> so that's the plan. I gotta just kind of tweak out a few things. I got somebody that's gonna film it for me. So I've got that worked out already. Um, the the suit's only gonna be like um, I don't know, like twenty, thirty, fifty dollars, something like that. There hey, he is. Up? What's up, man? What's up, buddy? How are you? <laughs> Doing good. How are you? Good. Yeah, I was. I didn't have much to do. I saw your uh, your link, so I figured I'd jump in. Yeah, sure. Company. By all means. By all means. So I I, I need to know more information about this lobster costume. As you can tell, I'm very invested in it <laughs> 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 because I really think that's your that's like your key to unlocking yeah. true yeah. true. I mean, we're talking rally roots levels, right? Like, yeah, that'd be funny. That would be hilarious. 
just yeah, walk into the, the thrift I- store. I, see, I didn't even think about that. I thought you were just going to wear it like around the house on your lives. I didn't even no. think about going to a thrift store. That's no, I'd, I'd go out. I would go out into the public and do it for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and, I've, and I've even thought of even got, I've got some people that follow me that are local and I've even thought about doing like um, t-shirts get red t-shirts made and have it say like the lobster family pod and they would be kind of like the people to kind of like surround the situation to for safety reasons um, because we would be like going into a store uh, we would be crossing streets and things like that and I just don't want I mean maybe it's shining more light on the situation but I, I would be curious to see just out of my own personality of curiosity is to see how many people would actually subscribe after a day of doing something like that. <laughs> that would be interesting. How much of a subscriber boost can you get locally? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Probably not many, dude. <laughs> yeah, are, you, are you, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm still learning. I, I just discovered your channel a little bit ago. Are you in Michigan? Is that why no, you're in Michigan? No, I'm actually hat? in California. Oh, you're in California. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I used to live in Michigan when I was a kid. <laughs> oh wow! So it's probably what three hours earlier than here on the East Coast. What is yeah, it? Yeah, we're there? three hours. What time is it there? Nine? Yeah, it's uh, eight thirty-six. Eight thirty-six. Oh. Yeah. So you're on the East Coast, I'm assuming. Yeah, I'm in uh, Richmond, Virginia. Oh, there you go. Yeah, lots of fun. Not too much to do here. I'm trying. I'm, I think. I don't know. There's a lot. I don't know if I want to make Richmond my home. I'm still kind of debating it, you know. <laughs> Tommy's right. I'm in Cali. No <laughs> one's gonna pay attention. <laughs> right. That's probably normal. Right. It's very normal. That's, Depends how that's close to the LA you are. Thing to it. Like here's here's the thing. This is like I was just saying before you came on. My study <laughs> of my own curiosity of doing something similar to this, and when you mentioned this, I think it was you that mentioned this in the in the live that I was. In. I did, uh, and it was in the chat or whatever. Um, and um, I, I I was thinking of this years ago of like getting in a suit, standing on a corner with a sign, okay, holding up a cardboard sign, you know, that says, you know, highly educated husband, father, blah blah. blah. Just put some verbiage on there of all positiveness. And see how much money I can make by people just throwing money at me. Because we're so groomed when we see, and and I would I would think like how more obvious would I have to be? Being groomed, tied out, dress shoot on, and it's gonna get someone's attention. But if I was to stand out there looking homeless, like I do now, uh, I would probably get, you know, I'd probably get money thrown at me. I'm just curious to see like how much more would I get or how much less would I get. If I stood out there and just flipped it to to the point where people don't pay attention, people wouldn't read the sign, people wouldn't care. They just see a body with a cardboard. They immediately think, "Oh, he needs a handout," or you know, whatever the case may be. <laughs> and with the what. lobster suit, hopefully they'll be able to see that it's all red, and that'll catch somebody's attention. I'll tell you what: you film it and title the video something in a lobster suit, right? But uh, suffix it with uh social experiment asterisk asterisk gone wrong and you're, yeah, you're you in go. for a viral hit right there yeah yeah <laughs> oh I, I i miss this uh jim butler i feel really bad because i'm not i'm still learning a lot of the uh creators around here who who's jim butler curated um, butler? i'll have to check him out here let's see see on youtube Oh, look at that. There he is. I'll hit that sub button. Okay, and he's in uh he's an RVA too. Interesting. So what are you doing tonight, lobster? Anything um, anything cool? Getting just some trying to stay stuff. out of the main house tonight. There's a lot of activity with the kids and got family over, and just need to kind of chill a little bit. It's been a busy day. Oh yeah. And you? What have I been doing? Um, yeah. Not what I should have been doing. A lot of <laughs> just kind of hanging around the house. Yeah. Um, 
you know i i find myself in this predicament a lot i so i've been doing reselling for like nine months not a significant amount of time i've had my ebay account longer than that but i only really got into it um august of last year about right. so do, do the math on however many months that is but yeah um and my big issue has been finding a lot of consistent inventory just because i'm i didn't really build up a death pile when i started out because i started out just doing video games right. um it was like my way of getting my uh, video game collection up you know i'd buy a lot of stuff sell off what i don't need keep the uh keep the extras but then i started thinking oh i could probably do this with other stuff and that was about the end of garage sale season so i only picked up a couple of things and then i and just kind of stuck to the thrift store game for a while and it's been all right but now i'm at a point where most of my stuff is listed so i don't know what to do <laughs> i just you know, you think of other other avenues of revenue i mean there's always amazon yeah, that's actually something um I don't know if you know uh, Nate. Yeah. Um, and yeah, he's been talking to me a lot about uh, Amazon. Um, yeah. I'm hoping Nate's to see him. Nate's very deeply involved with Amazon. He does oh, FBA. Yeah. I, don't, I don't do FBA. I do Merchant Fulfilled, but I'm sure he does too in some aspects. But yeah, he's heavily involved in that, which is good. I mean, yeah. that's that's a game changer. It's a lot. It's a learning curve, though. You know, I yeah. feel I feel like eBay. I don't know if it's just more intuitive for me, but it it just makes more sense to take pictures of a listing and put it up and set a price. But with FBA, I'm gonna be honest with you. I'll be honest yeah. with you. I actually think Amazon is easier. Really? Yeah, because hmm. the same concept of finding an item, you do the research, you find out what it's going for, what it's sold for. You don't have that feature. That's why when I look at an item. When I go shopping and I, I look something up, I see what it sells for on Amazon first, regardless of what platform I'm going to put it on, because I want to know, if, can I sell this on Amazon? And if I can, who else is selling it? And of those people that are selling it, what company is selling it that, you know, I look at the markings and see, uh, you know, is the company selling it? If the company is selling it or a distributor is selling it, then I don't sell it. I put it on eBay. But, um, you know, those are the things that I look at. And for me, to buy an item and scan it with the barcode, the picture's already there. You just gotta make sure right, your right. item matches the photo. You punch in a few things, and I'm saying literally a few things from the phone, and you're done. That's simple. You know, I can see that. Easier. Yeah, it's a lot easier, I think. I think um, the part that trips me up is the, and again, this is just because I haven't done it yet, right? But it's mainly the, the back end work of getting all of your products shipped in a box where the shipping cost kind of makes sense. You know, you want to build up some inventory before you ship it out so that you can get a smaller per unit price. I you're think shipping. when you do it, don't jump straight into FBA. Really? That's what Nate does. Treat Amazon as if you would eBay. Buy a product, okay. sell an item, test, test the item out. You know, there's going to be some products you're not going to be able to sell because Amazon is a very, 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 and I don't know how many more varies I can throw in there, <laughs> competitive market when it comes to selling and people will cut your throat on the way up. Um, so you have to be careful and leery and weary. And I'm sure between myself and Nate, especially, you can, you can question, you know, hey, can I sell this? Do you think, what do you, you know, what do you, what are your thoughts? You need to do your research. You're going to do more research on your product than you would normally on eBay. Because I think, in my opinion, when I research a product for eBay, I look at price and I look at how often it was sold. Yes. The sketchbooks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, I do. Hold on a second. Sorry, bud. <laughs> I just so happen to have it right here. You need to take this off, though. Here, hold on. Lighter fluid on a birthday party. Hold on. Oh, uh, go ahead. So what I was, what was I saying? Um, price and how often it sells. With Amazon, you can't really tell that because you're looking at a number called a sales rank. Mm -hmm. So 
you know, I always gauge it based upon that, but I think you should look into it and you can do it for free. Uh, you'll get billed 99 cents for every item sold until you get to uh, 40. Then if you start getting over 40 a month, because it's 39.99 or whatever it is for the pro account, you'll start getting billed for that. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely looking into it. I've get I'm getting a little bit of the the hardware that I was hoping to pick up um, for getting everything set up. Like you know, like late I have a I've got a label printer here that I was actually going to resell. I picked it up for five bucks. Yeah. At the thrift store. Um, but then found out it's the perfect size for like the, the FBA um, barcode labels and stuff like right. that. So I'm seeing all this stuff kind of come together and I think it might be close to time to actually try it out, you know? Right. Um, yeah. You could easily hang on to that until you're ready. Um, oh yeah. In the, in the, in the meantime, I mean, my Amazon pays for itself and I, I take I don't, I've never spent in 14 months. I've only been doing Amazon for 14 months. So it's been a learning curve for me also. And um, I've not spent one dime of it because it's something that I have never done. I've always done eBay. I've always done like Craigslist, uh, garage sales, swap meets, things like that. Amazon was one of those experiments that I wanted to do to see how much money I can make in a year. And between books and food, I've made more money in that amount of time in one year than I did in 15 years on eBay. Think about wow. That. Think about it. I'm going to go get, I'll be right back. I'm going to go get this. All right. Thing. I'll hold down the fort. Yeah, hold down the fort. All right, chat. How's it going? What are we all doing today? I joined a little late, so I, I missed some of these chats here. Oh my goodness. It's getting late. I don't know how you guys stay up. Especially Tommy. I always see Tommy in these uh these super super late shows. It blows my mind. Hey Brittany Brands. Okay. All right. Um yeah, but anyway, I think I think another benefit of Amazon, right, is just more traffic it seems yeah there's like, there's tons more so like yeah i mean it, i even noticed that with like ebay versus poshmark right so mm -hmm. so we we have most of our clothing on poshmark and i i, right. I will let the fiance handle that because I, i'm not very good at poshmark um but she's super good at it and staying on top of like sharing and everything but if you talk to anyone kind of like my age right um like 20s to 30s a lot of people don't trust eBay for some reason. They think right. it's like a like a scammer haven, right? And if you buy something on eBay, e even on Marketplace, like I'll message someone and be like, something will come up and I'll be like, well, you know, it's going on eBay for this much. Could you do this? And um, they'll, they'll shoot back with, yeah, you can buy it on eBay if you want to get a broken product or if you want to get scammed. And it's just like, wow, that that's really what, people think of this platform right <laughs> kind of sad it is it is very sad and amazon is the same way though too you get a lot of scammers in that uh arena but and the customer at least from what i've experienced i've only had three like three uh returns in the last year and i i just don't like dealing with people who lie about everything my first return was i sold chips uh they were the cheeto chips from last ye uh easter and they were selling crazy so i bought a bunch of them and uh, one of the orders went to um somewhere in the midwest and the lady said that the package looked like someone ran it over with a steamroller I'm like, okay, well, that obviously didn't go out that way because the post office wouldn't have shipped it. So I went to the extent of learning what the policy was with the post office because I've never had that incident before. And at this point, I will never sell bags of chips again because <laughs> I, here's what happened. I think the lady opened them and she ate them. Then she claimed that there was nothing in the box and they got flattened. But the post office said, in that area, because I, I called and, and escalated the case, 
They said that they would have not delivered it like that. They would have notified me um, and sent a message to the uh, owner or the buyer saying that it was damaged in process, which I find to be kind of true because USPS has done that to me with some Otter Pops that I was selling uh, to a church or a school or a hospital or wherever it was. And it, that box just completely disappeared. We, we Till this day, it's still a mystery. We don't know where it's at. But, you know, UPS said, hey, we don't have your package anymore. Uh, we're going to send you a refund. We notified the buyer and blah, blah, blah. So, you know, things like that happen all the time. But I don't know. It's just people are scandalous, man. They really are. Yeah. That's why um, one of my favorite things, ever, ever since I joined the, the RVA Flips uh, reseller group on Facebook, I started seeing all these great uh, posts from people like posting pictures of their their chats with different customers. And my favorite response to anything now is, all right, return it. Yeah. And 90% of the time, they don't return it. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I had the same... Uh... S same situation occurred recently just on eBay uh, on a radio. They, they they gave the individual till the second to return it. I still haven't received it. And I'm not going to give a refund until I get the item in hand. Right. So I, I go through the same issue. I mean, I'm sure everyone does. Oh, yeah. What um, I, do you like to sell over there? What was that? What kind of things do you sell over there on your on your platform? Um. eBay. You know anything I can come across. Right. Long, if it if it makes money, I'll I'll buy it. Um, now, my niche is video games. You know, I'm, yeah, I, 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 co I collect old retro video games, so I'm one of the people that you probably deal with as a buyer sometimes. <laughs> but mm -hmm. um, you know, so so going in, that's an easy thing for me to recognize what I'm looking at and about how much I should be paying. I also right. do repair I also do repairs and mods on stuff, so I'll buy broken like I'll do a little bit of OA on eBay and stuff like that, buying broken lots, um, fixing them up and stuff right. like that. Yeah, that's a good way to make money because you'll get guys like me who just like I have I like fixing TVs. I don't know why, but the 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 L C Ds are really easy to fix. It's just the you know a couple cards inside. Mm -hmm. uh, I have one that needs backlights. I can't find them. I have another one that just uh, needs to be finely cleaned and tuned. And, uh, and I bought a remote for it. These are things that, you know, I love getting for free. But when I find the parts on eBay, they're so cheap, you know, because mm -hmm. TVs are so, so inexpensive. So if one of the TVs in the house breaks down, I'll be like, not a problem. I got one that I spent $28 on. It's sitting in the garage. I'll be right back. So I like my, like that. my favorite one is, um, I don't know if you've ever come across. Do you know what a Sega Game Gear is? Sega, I think uh, it was uh... the, the handheld Game Gears, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. The more common hand, because they have another handheld, the Nomad, which plays Genesis cards. But the Game Gear was a um, a handheld that is notorious for not working when you buy it. Mm -hmm. So um, the main issue with that is that it's just uh, usually blown capacitors and. Luckily, you don't really come across a lot of corrosion on the board, but you'll see uh, blown caps on pretty much every single one of them. So the way to repair that is really easy. You buy a $5 capacitor kit, and as long as you have a soldering iron already, you, you just whip, open up that board, desolder those uh, capacitors, put new ones on, and you just turn a $5 Sega Game Gear purchase into a sixty dollar wow uh, flippable product nice that's awesome it's see awesome. that's that's where the money's at right there now you gotta be careful though because um a lot of people try to do the same thing with um this is something i'm really trying to get into but people do uh screen mods right so if you know like um it's kind of like you know how the the one model of Game Boy Advance SP, the 101s, they have the brighter screen, they're more desirable because people will pop them in other systems and stuff like that. Um, people do the same thing with like backlighting original Game Boys. Uh, they'll backlight uh, Game Gears and stuff like that. And you can buy kits for that. Um, I, I forget the guy's name, but there's a there's a modder out there that sells a lot of those kits. The thing is, the kit is like 80 bucks um msrp right mm. right away so i mean you could get in the ho wholesale if you wanted but mm -hmm. um i know a couple people that do wholesale on the kits and they don't even get that great of a price 
Um, but you can turn a $20 Game Boy Color, right, into a easily a hundred dollar product it's so it's just the thing is like there's not a lot of margin there you know right once once you start getting those into those mod kits so there's people that do good money on them i just i I haven't figured out the way they do it they must be getting killer prices but that kind of stuff's fun yeah i enjoy i enjoy stuff like that i think the thrill of taking something that's broke and fixing it and knowing what you've done to it and thinking wow that was easy and then turn around and selling it to even make three, four, ten times the amount of money that you would have, you know, gotten for for somebody not wanting to spend. And that's the problem. People don't want to spend the time to look mm-hmm. into it. Um, it, it. At least here in California, it, we have a recycle uh, purchase fee that you pay when you buy an electronic. And <clears throat> people don't are not aware of the fact that, especially with the televisions, you can go and take those to a recycling center that takes them and get money back for them. But you can only do so many a year, so they track it. But then, you know, it gets to a point where people are like, I don't want to deal with it anymore. And they just throw them to the curb. And you know, these parts are are cheap. They're very cheap. Yeah. That's unfortunate. That's another uh good thing to get into though, if you find like a TV or some electronic that you can't fix, parting it out for what's uh what's usable. <laughs> Has been pretty good. Well, for especially me too. like the vintage ones, bro. The vintage yeah. electronics. Uh, I have probably eight or nine projectors, the reel to reel kind of things mm-hmm. that were uh, thrown away at a swap meet. And I grabbed them because I'm thinking if they don't work, and the, the most expensive part on them right now is probably the bulb because it takes a special bulb apparently. But, you know, maybe I have two or three of them there that I could sell for parts only. And it's just because it's missing the bulb. I don't know. I don't have a way. Especially I haven't gotten to that. Well, even going a step further than that, um, I actually, I have a situation I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do right now. I think I'm going to part out this uh, product, but it's a, it's a Keurig uh, machine. I I got it out of the dumpster. Um, It totally works. I cleaned it and everything, but then I was looking at the prices for it and it's only selling for like 30, 35 bucks, which isn't bad. I had nothing into it, but I did a little bit of research and the individual parts. If I was to sell the tank by itself, that's 20 bucks plus shipping. The yeah. lid to the tank is like 15, you know, the little base plate um, that your, cu- your, your mug sits on is like 10 bucks. And I was yeah. like, well, this seems like, it might just be better. I don't know why. Like, it doesn't make sense. If, if you really wanted, you could just buy a, a broken one that has a working tank if it's cheaper. Right. But, um, but you got a lot of people who like to tinker. And mm-hmm. the tinkering days of back when, I'm going to say this, quote, unquote, Grandpa Joe was around. Like, uh, like your dad's <laughs> dad kind of a thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. People during the Depression, during the time of the uh, Industrial Revolution. I mean, people took... I mean, these are the people that take banana, banana, baby jars and screw them, you know, to the wooden plank shelves over the workbench <laughs> kind of guys. You know what I'm saying? Right. Those guys, they're the ones that build their own amble that sits on the end of the bench. I mean, that's the kind of shit that people used to do. They used to be very resourceful. And that has gone to the wayside. Because well, it's because now, of what they because of what they went through, right? Oh, of course. Of yeah. course. But I I I I hold that standard of industrialism to a higher level than convenience. I mean, ever since they invented the drive-through, we've gone downhill, bro. We've gone downhill. Hey, <laughs> man, I, I will never complain about a drive-through. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love that because now I can, I know I shouldn't be driving without shoes, but now yeah. I can go barefoot. Yeah. Yeah. Like Dan quick. You know, if I, if I, if, if I have a high enough, uh, door, I can go pantsless for all I yeah. can. Uh, you wouldn't even be able to tell. It's amazing. You never have to step out of my car. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. Oh, oh, now that's I get cute. now I get upset when like if I go to a Starbucks and the Starbucks yeah. doesn't have a drive through. Oh yeah. And I'm like, what? Is, what is this? <laughs> why? Why don't yeah. you have a drive through? Come on, it's 2020. Yeah, right. What's going on here? <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I used to get, I used to get, uh, I don't get upset anymore now because I've gone there so many times every day. But at the local McDonald's, I go to get the morning coffee after I get done with work and I, I sit for a minute and have some coffee and then I, I leave to come home if I have time. But I used to get so flipping pissed standing there being the only guy at like quarter to six in the morning in front of a register. And they have like the two kiosks over here that I could have easily went to. But it's not going to speed up the process, I don't think, any faster. But the drive through people are just like on their way to work. And the employees, you know, are sitting there servicing them. And there's this lonely old guy, daddy hair, looking homeless, <laughs> just wanting a cup of coffee, you know? I was like, come uh, on. Now they've improved it a little better. Yeah, that's the thing. drive through always gets priority, right? Please. It's cake time. It's cake time. Yeah, we had a birthday today, so we're, we're getting... Well, happy birthday you. to the lucky person. Well, not me. Uh, not, the lucky yeah, not person. Me. Yeah, the 14-year-old. The oh, boy. Yeah. Four I... girls four girls in the house and two of them are teenagers. Man, that scares me. I have a, <laughs> I have a, I have a toddler right now, and I don't even want yeah. to imagine. He's yeah. crazy enough as it is. <sighs> yeah, it's, it's, it's only going to – we're adding one more to the family, too. Oh, so boy. Five, five kids, yeah. Do you know? Do you know the gender it's yet? A boy, it's gonna be a boy. It's a boy. Yeah. No, wait. I I forget. You said you is it all girls right now? Right now, I have all girls. I have oh, I have boy. other children outside of the marriage, but right. um, we have we have three together now with the baby on the way, and then my wife has uh, two from a previous marriage. So that boy is long overdue, is what you're saying? Well, yeah. My but first you... child when I was <laughs> 20, 20 something or another it was a boy. So. I've, oh, got, I've got my boys. I've got two boys. Okay, you haven't been surrounded by girls your whole life. No, no, no. no. <laughs> yeah, I can. I, I got people to carry on the family name. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, boys are crazy, man. I, I I get so jealous of other parents around town that have uh, girl toddlers because they're always yeah. so they're always so nice. Right. My my boy like. He he walks up to other kids and steals their toys, and like he like if someone comes up and tries to talk to him, he'll just scream "Dada" at their face, and I'm like, oh, wow. <laughs> it's like I don't even know what you're doing, man. Come on. Yeah, right. <laughs> I notice with my girls, they're very clinging to me. They they only resort to mom for certain things, <clears throat> like um, I don't know. They get into a they get into a mode or a mood, I should say. Then they want mommy. But any other time, it's daddy this, daddy that. When they want adventure, when they want to be like Lewis and Clark, they, they come and hunt me down. But you if know, they want to cuddle and watch a movie, they go see mom. Junk Girl Patty, I totally agree that I, I – well, I can't. I haven't done it yet, but I've heard that boys are much easier as they get older. That's the only – that's the only thing that I'm really holding out for because I know all the people who have it good with girls right now, wait till they're preteens, wait till they're, you know, sneaking out of the house, doing something crazy. I know how, I know how teenage girls are. They get, mm -mm, boys are easy. I think what will get easier though, <laughs> I look forward to it, is when the girls get older and I get older and I get to a place in my life where I need to slow down a little bit. I think the girls will be there for me. Unlike yeah. the boys, like I was never there for my folks. I left when I was 16 and yeah. I haven't looked back since, but hopefully but, but, I've, I've made the right choices. But then I wonder if like, maybe that swap switches a little bit when the boy gets the, I don't know, maybe like late twenties. Yeah. yeah. Really yeah. mature. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully. We'll see. I got a 26 year old out there that uh, hasn't seen me since he was probably 12. Oh, geez. So we shall see. Man, this is good ice cream. I tell you that. <laughs> Black cherry. Oh, my God. It's so delicious. Oh, my goodness. Thrifting 365. Is that a typo? I thought you said yours are 47 and 42. You meant 37. Oh my goodness! So, are you a part-time uh, reseller? 
Yeah, I'm a I'm a software engineer full time, and mm. I just do this on the side. Um, my main goal is to, um, I you know I, I I'm I'm not out here saying I'm going to be doing reselling for the rest of my life. Um, my main thing is I want to learn it, get relatively decent at it, where I can be making somewhat of an income off of it. Um, I don't ever plan to drop my full-time job for it just because I, I, I like software development. I don't think I could really live a life without doing that. Um, but I do want to venture into other entrepreneurship stuff like uh, possibly use this again? as – What was that? How old are you again? I just turned 22. That so. is crazy, dude. I envy you. Good for you. Yeah, I'm a Good young. You. I I always uh, in chats. I'll tell people I was born in 1998, and it, blo- and it makes them feel really old. I got, on, <laughs> I got out of the Marine Corps in 1998, but you to be 22. I got really, out of something else it, in 1998. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Very witty, uh, by the way. The um, the idea of you being so young and in the, in the um. The reselling community i mean i think that's phenomenal i mean you're you're part-time you haven't done full-time and you're gonna make money while you sleep that's the fun yeah and i i mean it it's not i mean nothing's truly passive income but i mean it it, it's it it helps out a lot you know I, i mean i'm not at the point where i'm paying myself i'll occasionally throw in some personal purchases which i really shouldn't but you know only human um but yeah, mo- most of the money that comes in from the whole reselling thing is going directly into new inventory and Yeah. You got to keep feeding it. You got to keep Oh yeah. It. It's crazy. I was just checking the numbers actually um yesterday and it was crazy because I started off with like n- not even a lot of money, probably like 50 bucks, right? Yeah. And I'm sitting on like $7,000 of inventory now. And it's like I got th- I got about 30,000 sitting behind me right now. Right, but it's crazy how quickly it grows. Yeah. It's like, oh my god! Yeah. And you know, that's that's listed. That's not money in the bank, but it's still like, wow. <laughs> like, I how have did, eleven thousand. Did... I have eleven thousand and change, almost twelve thousand on eBay, and it's eight hundred and almost nine hundred units or uh, listings. Wow. Nine hundred listings on eBay of about twelve grand. So it's a lot of old inventory that I'm I'm squashing. So I've been liquidating, right? I notice on the weekends we get a lot of orders. So don't let it get out of control like I did. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I'm trying to, I, I've been letting it, you can see, kind of take over the house, which I, I don't like at all. So I got a storage unit like about a month ago, and I've been trying to fill it up with everything as I can. Right. There you go, dude. That's that's awesome. I mean, I never had that. I mean, you came in at a perfect time. A lot of these younger sellers coming in at a perfect time. That's why you see a lot of older people doing it now because, I mean, the internet's been around since 1991. Mm-hmm. Apparently, Al Gore says he's responsible for it, but whatever. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, rem- I have faint memories of dial-up. I remember the sound a little bit, you know? <laughs> It's good ass cake, man. <laughs> my buddy's over here talking about making money, and I'm sitting here feeding my face with some birthday cake. <laughs> I like that word mukbanging. I just learned that like uh, two days ago. Um, yeah, man. That's Filipino. What was that? Mukbang. I wonder if that's uh, Filipino or Vietnamese or something. I don't know. I don't know. You know, can you tell me, lobster? Let's be real here. I need mm-hmm. to under I need to understand the first part of your name. Sparsumlik. What is that? Uh, Danish for thrifty. Ah, Danish. See, I, I um, I've been learning German for the past ten years, and I was like, that's a Germanic word, but it's not German. I have no mm-hmm. idea what that it's is. Danish. Danish. Yeah. I had to think of my name. I had um different different variations of it, but then I thought, you know what? I need to stick to my roots because my family's from from Deutschland. So I had to come up with something to show homage to the Vikings. And then something that I enjoyed doing uh, was fishing for lobsters. And lobsters are hoarders. And I thought, well, what's the word for thrifty in in Deutschland? And 
or Danish, and there it was. And I said, that's it, sparsumling lobster. And then I said, well, people aren't going to be able to pronounce it, so it's going to turn out to be this phenomenal lobster, lobster, and it has. It, I nailed it right on the head. If I was in marketing, I would have gotten an A+. Plus on that. There you go. I love it. Oh, that's super cool. Danish. I wouldn't have thought Danish. So your your family's from uh, Denmark? Yeah, my grandfather is straight from Denmark. Look at that. Yeah, and then my dad, and then so um, I guess I would be, what, quarter? Sec second generation. Yeah, yeah. Or is that third generation? I don't know what you would, if it starts from one or zero there. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I'm the grandson of a great man. That's very cool. Yeah, man. Oh, but you were anyways. talking about. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh no, no, never mind. You go. I was gonna. I was gonna ask you when you said that you sell the same thing to make money. I wanted to ask you this earlier, but we we got off on another topic. Is when you price your items. Mm -hmm. I know some of the games can sell quite well for good prices. I'm not too too familiar with it, but I do recall selling some. Uh, video games years ago that I found a Wii console and some Wii games like uh, uh, Zelda or whatever it was. And there was another couple other ones that sold for really good money. I found it in the trash. And that was the only time I really kind of dabbled in the media because it's such a saturated market. So, but when you buy, buy a game, how much are you buying a game for? I have a, well, it, you know, it all depends. I usually try and buy lots. I don't, it's not really a, case of where i find a single game that's worth it um i try to cap myself out at about three to four dollars per game depending on cost um okay. like for example i can show you what i just got today and uh this might be a lobster exclusive because i don't know if this is going to be on a video um but i got a stack let me uh let me take out what i'm keeping here but i got a stack of a couple of games some of these might be familiar. Some of these might not. Um, first up is pretty recognizable: Mario Party Eight for the Wii. Yeah. These yeah. are all th these are all three dollars, right? Um, okay. This is probably I, I forget exactly. It's probably like a fifteen dollar game. Um, another important thing is to make sure you have manuals of some kind. This does not have a manual. This yeah. is just a insert, right? Right. Um, I picked up Hot Wheels velocity x for the gamecube this right. is another like 15 dollar game but no manual so i'm going to take a little bit less for it um not huge money here and then another one which I, i'm sad to part with because i don't have it yet but I'm, i need the money um oh oh super monkey ball 2 oh. which is an awesome game and uh yeah that's complete three bucks wow. that's probably like um I, I think when I come to that, I was like 20, 20 I was going to say like maybe 19.99 or 20 bucks for that. Yeah, around there. So, but you know, it all depends. If if it's like a big box filled with games, like I just picked up, um, I, I shouldn't say just, but uh, about a month or two ago, I picked up a lot of NES games, um, which surprise had some Sega Master System games inside that I didn't know were there. Right. Um, but I spent like 120 on the box. It had a console and something around 40, 45 games and ended up getting like probably two times my money back right, right now. And I still have a couple more that need to sell off. So they do well, even though I'm, I'm actually kind of a friend because I have a ton of media. Yeah, cassettes, CDs, mm -hmm. DVDs, Blu-ray. I don't know how many gaming ones I have, but the market is so saturated. Oh hey, it's an uh, it's Nate. I just noticed yeah. him. Yep. Nate, come in here, man. Oh, yeah. Come hang out. He likes <laughs> monkey balls. He loves monkey balls. Monkey ball is fun, man. Yeah. It's a fun game. I think he's referring to the real monkey dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Dog is in the house. But yeah, I mean, try, sum it up. I try to cat myself out about three to four um usually less if it's um newer well, how much stuff of a profit are you looking at when you do that so when you 
buy a game for three and you're looking at your comps, you're going to need at least 15 plus for each one, right? Is yeah, I, I, back and shipping? I usually shoot for, um, well, I, I kind of base it off of the lot, right? Because I mm -hmm. end up ultimately keeping some things. Um, so that's going to throw what off, gonna that's, that's going to throw off, you know, the, the, per unit price. Um, so I, I focus on the lot number. If I spend 120, I want to get like at least 250 right. um, more if I can. Right. The thing is, I, I'm even okay taking a little bit less if it's because it's video games and video games just have a really high turnover rate. Um, you know, you, most gaming items, if it's consoles or if it's, uh, hey, Nate, what's up? What's up? This guy, this guy. What's he got going on in the back back yeah, there? Yeah, that background's <laughs> crazy. What's that? Little, little know, green brother. screen. <clears throat> this is a little green screen. <laughs> nice. You upgraded the uh, the studio there. Yeah. Still trying to. A He's getting high little. tech on us, man. <laughs> getting high tech on us, brother. Oh wow. A little 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 green screen <clears throat> off Amazon. I got for fifteen bucks or something like that. I had it all kind of set up already. I was trying to use just a, uh, a curtain or whatever, but, you know, it didn't work out because I guess it was too dark. So I, I just know, said, know. forget it. We'll just go with the green screen. Yeah. You like my green screen? Look at that, dog. <laughs> Handmade, bro. <laughs> I need to get a green screen. That'd be fun. So what's up, everybody? What are we doing? Just hanging uh, out. We're sitting here talking about just anything, dude. Hanging out, chatting, talking like about monkey balls. Really. talking about monkey balls, eating strawberries, and uh, like my, playing video games. It was like one of my favorite games back in the day. Yeah, man, monkey balls, awesome. I remember at the uh, the daycare I went to, we had uh, game cubes hooked up, and definitely played a lot of Super Monkey Ball back then. Oh yeah. Well, I'm gonna take you back in time. My favorite one was uh, Donkey Kong. Which oh, one? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't very play a lot of Donkey Don Kong. <laughs> very first one. Donkey Kong, River Raid, Frogger. That's the last time I ever played a video game. Really? Yeah. It's a while they've ago. Changed, they've changed a lot since then. Yeah, they have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. I would still yeah. rock an Atari, though, the original one. I have one. Yeah, I bet you do, brother. I have one. I have, like... I bought one in yard so last year it had like a, <clears throat> a nice like case like to hold the games when they're not playing them mm -hmm. and i don't know how many games i think like 40 games wow something like that it was definitely a bunch of games i think i paid like i, know, I think i paid like 20 bucks for it or something what a steal what a steal the That's games are surprisingly not not worth that much no, no. i was kind of shocked how you know, very, very little they're really worth. So I think it's because of the technology. Since we've advanced from that stage to where we are now, what? Look at this. Yeah, I ever, ever seen one of these bad boys? That was like the video games for eight tracks, right? <laughs> what the <hell> is that? <laughs> this was this was a competitor to the Atari. Good old ColecoVision. Oh and, yeah. All right. And also. I recently found out the original creators of Cabbage Patch Kids, which would explain the licensed Cabbage Patch Kids games on the ColecoVision. Oh, so wow. that was something I just learned. See, this is the stuff that I like about reselling. Like, you learned that. And when you spoke of Cabbage Patch, I had to look, I had to, I watched a full on documentary on how everything came about from its original times of when the, the actual idea was stolen from this poor old lady who was sewing this shit by hand. And then some, you know, multi-billionaire millionaire guy walks in and starts popping them out, you know, out of Chinese <laughs> manufacturing. You know, there was a big whole deal about that. And I thought, wow, you know, I would, I'd never known. And I would have thought, you know, Cabbage Patch dolls, they were such a craze. People were getting killed and getting trampled during Christmas time because of these dolls. That's why they have so many rules now because of that incident and you would think oh these things are going to be worth a lot of money no they're about worth about 12 15 dollars yeah. yeah 
It's a shame. Yeah, unless they're like new and packaged, there might be yeah. a little more. But other than that, they're, that's about all they're worth. Yep. Yep. Good night, Kelly. Have a good night. That's interesting because um, I just re recently listed about four to five like 1980s Cabbage Patch Kids. And I, I went ahead and put them all up for 35 each just just to see what happens. Let see what happens because it. I think some of them are worth some money, though. Like the oh, yeah. Red one. Um, maybe some of the doll heads. Like I have two of the 1984 doll heads in the box, but the boxes are all ratted out. Um, I thought they might have been worth some money, but they're only worth like 10 bucks. Yeah. I'm sure yeah. there's I'm sure there's certain ones that are more you know more rare more yeah. sought after yeah. than, than you know some of them so yeah you never know just like I saw someone to, sell a VHS for a hundred bucks the other day like <laughs> right some crazy stuff can happen it's it's very true I mean I, I can't relate to anything ridiculous other than that guy during Christmas who spent one hundred and twenty seven dollars to have a twenty eight ounce can of enchilada sauce sent to his house. He spent $127 in shipping. And I thought, oh, I'm going to get a return on this for sure. I thought maybe he did a drunk purchase or something. I spent $50 to have it shipped the next day. And I thought for sure something was going to get brought up with the difference. You now I, I was able to bank that money. <laughs> wow. He needed his sauce and he needed it now. Yeah. Right? He, he needed it in like the worst way ever. <laughs> they would have shipped it. Priority, and it wouldn't have gotten there just as fast. <laughs> yeah, I shipped some probably like seven bucks. I shipped a toy to some guy. It was like a, a big commercial building in, in New York or something, and he was like, "Hey, can you ship this overnight?" I'm like, "Well, when do you need it?" And he's like, "Well, I need it um, by Saturday or whatever," and it was like Tuesday. And I'm like. I send this priority. Now you're gonna get it by at least Friday because I'm only you know stayed away. You know what I mean? He's like, well, I can't take that chance to send it overnight. I'm like, are you sure? <laughs> you know? And he's like, yeah. And uh, he spent like <clears throat> the the toy was like thirty five or thirty bucks. He spent like forty five dollars shipping or something like that. Luckily, it was like really close compared to. You know, I'm sure that sauce must have went freaking far for 100. Yeah, 27 bucks for, yeah, for overnight. Wow. And what's funny is the sauce only costs is it cost me like a dollar seventy nine to buy. <laughs> Selling it for like fifteen dollars or whatever a can. That's I want to. I want to know more about this story. How you even uh, picked up on enchilada sauce to sort like sell? <laughs> well, like was, it was it? The, the, okay, there's two things in life that you have to learn: fight or survive, right? So, like, you got to think of yourself being trapped in a corner. You're either gonna fight your way out, or you're gonna, you know, you're gonna run. So you need to survive your, you know, your your, your environment. So by selling on Amazon, I uh, having started with the books. I used to sell books on half.com. This was probably early 2000s when eBay had it as their book site. They were competing with Amazon and I don't think half.com ever even got it up. I don't, I don't even know if it even exists anymore, but I never closed my account, so I don't know. <coughs> so I started selling books on Amazon and realized that some of the uh, fees were just outrageous. Like I have a textbook right now that's uh, $54, and they're going to take $10 from me when that book sells. And I thought that was crazy. So in food, the, the percentage is less. It's like 8%. That's what drove me. And the fact that I'm selling products that people use every single day. A book, I got to wait for someone to be interested in the author, interested in the story, interested in the topic, whatever the case is. But with food, I'm thinking, all right, what can I sell? I can sell everyday products like this, 99 cents at the bargain market. I'm selling them for $8 to people in Canada. Why in Canada? Because it's cold and they want strawberry jam. 
You know what I mean? So they have to deliver it in the wintertime. So those are the things that I thought, like, okay, let me find a niche. Let me find a specialty. So I, I kind of take a little bit of every bit of culture that I can get. And I go to the local mar- uh, the markets, the Mexican mercados, and I buy the salsas, and I buy the hot sauce, and I buy the, the domus, the the Greek domus, the, the the grape leaves with the rice and the beans or um, beef in it, or whatever the hell it is. 79 cents a can, guys. I sell it on Amazon for twelve ninety nine a can. So, you know, my, what I'm hoping for is that people buy more than one. Because when they buy more than one, one can, the cost of one can will pay for the shipping and the rest is profit. So I, I do quite well with that. Plus, they last longer. And if I need to go shopping for enchilada sauce or uh, salsa or sugar or coffee or filters or whatever I may need, I got my pantry right there. <laughs> have, you, have you tried sending any of that in the FBA? Uh, no, I haven't because I'm not, I'm not ready for that yet. I would know I would probably do better, but I have yeah. Solar Prime. But I would do a lot better if I opened it up to that because then I could be more competitive in some of my strategies in some of those items because FBA does get the buy box all the time. Right. Um, but what I do is I have gauged my business plan of I want the customer that doesn't have Prime. I want the customer that doesn't want to spend $25 or more to get that prime price. So those are the people that I'm targeting, which is not nearly as high volume as the buy box uh, allows, you know, the other sellers there. So. Well, as a, if, if, for example, like I bought something that, <clears throat> that was, um, I think it was like eight ninety nine. It was like a USB hub. I didn't have to pay 25 bucks to get free shipping. And no? I have, I have Prime. Yeah, it just it's just free shipping with oh, okay. uh, with Prime now. There's no so like they changed it. They they might do it on certain items because there was uh, an item okay. that I sold before that they'll go. Yeah. Well, uh, to get this item for this price, you have to have tw- you know have, basically has to be going with another item worth you know for twenty five dollars. Sometimes right, they will right. do that, but they don't yeah. do that very often. It's it's a lot of times it's like on like really small items that. You know, they add that to another, you know, box or whatever. It's not going to really change the the weight really or anything like that. Right. But yeah, if you if you would, uh, you know, send that an FBA, it, uh, you know, it could go from something you sell, say, just I'm just making a number of say five or ten a month to fifty a month. You know, yeah. what I mean, it could really Boost like sales. like I you know like I talk like. Like there was an item that I sold, um, 299 in 30 days. And wow. like, I always talk about, you know, sell items that people use every day. Every day. Yep. I agree. And with that's that. exactly what that was. It was an everyday yep. item yep. that everyone uses every day and stuff like that will fly off the shelves, yep. especially FBA. You know what I mean? Everyday so, items, limited edition items, discon- yep. discontinued items, things that are hard for people to get. And especially with region, with location, like it might be easier for you, Nate, to get a product where you live that I can't get. But then I might have like for Taco Tuesday at Nate's house, he's like, he's, he's, he's craving for some special kind of food for his family. And he's right. like, dude, right. I know this guy that sells this shit over in Cali. So, you know, that's the way that's it exactly is. That's exactly right. Like find what, what is, you know, what your area specializes in and just start scanning. That's that'd yep. be the first thing I would scan. Yep. Hop in an Amazon for anybody. That a lot of people like doing books. I go straight to the home goods. You know what I mean? I'm I'm in the kitchen and the the glassware and the other stuff and just yeah. I'm scanning away. And I uh, sold my first electronic today on Amazon. It was oh a yeah, used, a used uh, uh, cordless house base with two two phones, um, AT and T something or another. Paid three ninety nine, so for I lowered it down to twenty nine ninety nine because I wanted to get rid of it because I got tired of all the email questions. <clears throat> Does it have this? Does it have that? Can I do this? Can I do that? I'm like, no, it's a phone. It rings. You say hello, and someone's <laughs> supposed to say something on the other side. <laughs> yeah, we sold that today. We got that out of here. I was I was grateful. I mean, it was a nice little profit, but 
I couldn't believe it. The one day, uh, I was at, I was in the dollar general getting some for my wife and they, they do like huge, you know, clearance, uh, things like they do now. And I saw a corded phone and it was Emerson. Hmm. I'm like, um, I was like, well, what do they want for it? I think it was like two or three bucks brand new. Nothing wrong with it. I scan it. It's like really high rank, like really good ranking. It was really good. So I was like, okay, we'll grab it. I think I sold it for thirty nine ninety nine. Wow, that's awesome! And it sold instantly, like yeah. instantly. Wow. So yeah. going to the store to go get the wife something because she forgot to buy something. Yeah, that's the way to shop. Easily, dude. Yeah, it easily paid for my shopping trip. Yeah, my that's the way to shop. Else, that's know? the way I shop all the time. And that was the other thing, Brittany. You asked, um, like when I go grocery shopping, it's like I'm already there. And I take coupons with me. I take, I follow the ads. I shop wherever the sales are, <clears throat> mainly because, and I'll scan an ad. I'll scan an ad with the image. Sometimes you can get the product on Amazon from the ad. You don't have to go to the store. And you can right. see what it sells for right away. And yep. it, that's, that's the joy that I love about Amazon. I mean, I could sit at home talking about no shoes and no chonies, dog, sitting in your chair. <laughs> in the I'm sitting in the dining room. With my, my boxers on, a cup of coffee, and my phone scanning ads <laughs> when they come in just to see what they sell for. And then I'm like, okay, we got to go to this store. We got to go there anyway for this, that, and the other. And I try to get it so that the product, like yesterday, two days ago, we went to CBS. That whole day that I was out and about between CBS and Walmart, I must have spent like, I don't know, probably like $100 just between those two stores. But all together, I spent $527 to pay bills. Uh, take the wife out for lunch and, and do some other things. But the money I'm going to make from the CBS haul that I did is going to reap me about almost $400 from a $45 investment. So nice. it's going to take me a year to get that shit back because it's seasonal stuff that I've got on here, which is this crap here. But the thing is, is I'm going to get at least 75% of my money back from yes, uh, the other day when we went out. So that's how I shop. That's how I look at it. What is uh, Valentine's behind you? Yeah, we got. Uh, I didn't get so many, so much candy. I got these, Nate. Um, these were out. Belly bellies. I was just taking pictures of that and putting it on eBay. These four alone that I got, um, I've got for seventeen forty nine. They're gonna pay for the forty five dollars seventy two cent haul that I had at CVS, and then the other items that I have here, uh, along with some other stuff that's down here in the boxes. They're going to go um, on, in a, but I'm going to put them on eBay and let them soak. And, um, you know, that's all profit. Yeah. See, I did really well with uh, Valentine's last year. I bought a whole bunch for 10 cents a piece. Mm -hmm. And they sold, like, I sent them in FBA, and I think they sold for, like, seven ninety nine. Yeah. So I probably yeah, cleared, well. like, three or four bucks. Candy After well. fees and everything, probably about three Berg, bucks. Berg, that's what you could do, bud. You wow. could go to the dollar. What is it over there in Richmond? What's it called? Dollar General, Family Dollar, Dollar yeah, Tree. Yeah, we, we have all those guys. Yeah. You just go in and pick. Don't get to crappy candies, dog. Stick to like the <laughs> Jelly Bellies, the Laffy Taffies. Um, here's the secret: go after the Mexican candy. Really? Yeah, I mean, I'm no, not this is, saying this. this I know is... I'm saying this on the internet to 22 people to chat, and then the pre-records and all the other stuff. But here's what you sell: you sell stuff that people can't get. Now you can go and get Bubblicious. You can go and get lollipops and Tootsie Rolls and all that. Anybody and everywhere has that. But there's some areas that can't get certain things. In my case, I can get Mexican candy. Uh, I don't even get it from Mexico. I get it here in California, but I, I, I sit it on Amazon and I sell a lot to the East Coast. But you need to find something that you think that you have that I don't have or what Nate may not have up there in, in the PA area. So that's that's your that's your thought that you need to walk into when you walk into a Dollar Tree. <laughs> Clearance first, obviously, because that's where you're going to get the best bang for your buck. I mean, these were 30... I think these came out. There's no candy in them. They're little pop-up cards. These were 32 cents a box. Now, they're pre-marked for $3.99. I have a way around that. But if not, I, I'd still pop them for $3.99 plus shipping. I'll still make some money on it. 
I mean, if I put it on eBay, uh, I might do a ball. And worst case scenario, I told the wife, if I don't sell them by the end of next uh, February, obviously, you know, after Valentine's, the middle of February, I'm just going to donate them to the school so the kids can give them out the year after. So, you know, what's it going to cost me? I'm going to get my money back. I know that by sure. So worst case scenario, I break even. I'm good thing with that. that. I, thing that I do with uh, the little 399s, I'll just put my uh, FBA sticker right across that. So this uh -huh. way it's covered up and I ain't going to worry about it anymore. Well, I have the Christmas stand, the artificial Christmas stands that I sell that I get at Walmart all the time. Uh, they're wising up on it, though. They're not ordering as much. One year I picked up, uh, I don't know, it was like 60-some boxes for 10 cents a box, dude. And they were the, um, it, it's one of those things that you wouldn't think. Like, okay, you have a Christmas tree. It has a stand. It goes back in the box. Next year, you take the tree out. It comes with the stand out of the box. But for some reason, people lose or break them, or they'll get a tree that doesn't have a stand. So I bought the artificial Christmas tree stands, and then I bought the natural, uh, the, the natural tree stands. I still have a ton of those left over. The artificial ones sell out every year. And what I was doing, and there were $7.99. I was taking an X-Acto knife, and I was just skinning this off. And then sticking a sticker over that, like a, a white sticker. In that case, it was white. So this one, I would just put a white sticker over this. But I'll just cut it out. I don't want to mark it up. But, you know, I might do it for like seven fifty, I think, for these boxes. So I don't know. We're, we're going to see. We're going to make money on it, though. I, I got to do a little bit more homework on it. Yeah, I, I, I think the ones I got were just the... Um... Like the Paw Patrol, the Mickey Mouse, mm -hmm. the um, Wonder Woman. What was the other one? There was one more. But it was like all the character ones that I bought. And I got them for 10 cents. So I was like, I can't lose here. I said, worst no, case can't. scenario. I got can't. Valentine's can't Day uh, yeah. cards for the kids all the way up to uh, till it's not cool to do it anymore. Uh, other <laughs> than <laughs> Christmas, other than Christmas for me, from what I've seen last year like q q2 is always good for me q4 was okay last year because i it was better than any year before because i just jumped on the amazon but q2 has always been phenomenally hands down the best quarter but holiday wise christmas is number one and valentine's is number two <laughs> <That matrix. laughs> i'm in my I'm in my new studio See, I'm not going to lie, man. You guys are giving me ideas. Look, look. See? More income. Mexican candy is the best, but I don't have any in Fargo. Well, well I guess I'll tell you where you can buy it. <laughs> I know where you can get it. Oh, yeah. That's funny that you brought up, like, the candy stuff, because I was actually looking for a brand of candy that's not sold in, in at least no stores around here that was... Um, I don't want to say we're going viral. I think there were some TikTok videos about it or whatever, or something like that. And um, oh, is it the little balls? I can't remember what it was. My wife, I I messaged the distributor. I didn't get no message back. Sometimes they're really hard to deal with. Sometimes it's really easy to deal with. I mean, I've had like more more good luck than bad, but for whatever reason, they didn't message me back. So. I don't know, but uh, it's it was about a month ago. I'm trying to think what it was. It was either a Mexican candy or like an Italian candy, yeah, something like that. But uh, but they're selling really good on Amazon. See, I, I'm I'm not too <laughs> proud of this, but I I've consumed a lot of TikTok content over the past couple of months, oh. and um, the only thing I can think of candy wise is. I guess it's not really candy, but people will put, like, fruit juice in a Ziploc bag, right? And then ball it up so that it's, like, really pressurized in the corner of the bag. And then they put it in their mouth and they bite it and suck. I don't know. It's satisfying, I guess. I don't know. But they check. just bite into let it. Let me check my email. Let me see what, <laughs> what company it was. Yeah, we came across one of the products uh, when we bought the Valentine's Hall. And we only bought one one item of it, and it was quite a bit still on the shelf, but it wasn't 90% off. And I told my wife, and I didn't have the phone at the time, I said, you should, you and I should try this during lunch and see what it tastes like because it's from 
it's from out of out of uh, out of country and it and it has a lot of almonds in it and it's you know it would be good for people who are vegans and things like that um and there were 67 of these it's still on the shelf and i told the guy so i'm going to come back on thursday um if it's still here i'm hoping that you guys will mark it down because it was 249 and it sells for about um 12 13 dollars on amazon and i'm thinking what i'm going to do is because it's got some time is I'm to about 17. Wow. I'll make some money on that now is candy gated usually or no, no unless, it's, gated. unless it's like some of the exclusive I right think like so. reese's or no because i can well i had to get permission to sell um camera what it was it was um rock right Rocks? It was one of the, like, um, uh, what was it? They have the little cherry ones that I, I was like, har, har, I can't remember. It's har something. Yeah, you'll know when you scan the item. Yeah. Wow, the, I just never thought about candy. I, dude, candy is, <laughs> candy is, it went from books to candy. And then candy, it led me to other, th it, it, went, it went like this. Started with books, sold out all my books. And I kind of saw what, well, how much time did that take? How much money did I make? And they're like, okay, let's add some. Like, what do people do when they when they read a book? They're eating, they're snacking, they're drinking, uh, coffee and tea. So I went to coffee and tea. Coffee sells hella quick. Tea not so quick, but it sells. Coffee filter sells kind of sorta. Uh, then I thought, okay, well with coffee and tea, what else do you need? Uh, crackers, crumpets, whatever the hell you want to call it. Chips, candy. Then the candy really stood out to me. And I said, okay, within candy, what particular product can I get here that you can't get over there or he can't get over there? And then I really kind of honed in on that. And I picked a couple of products and I sampled it. And then I picked a couple more and then I stuck on a couple and I'm still sticking on those because they're, they're true and true. Um, very profitable. That's really cool. Man. And it's every day. If I run out, I can go to the store, and I know exactly what aisle it's on. I know where it's at, and I can pick it up and throw it in the cart. Hmm. When I do that, though, I love when the uh, the checkout, if I, do, if I don't do self-check, I like to do self-check because then I don't have to have conversations with the, with the cashier because they'll be like, oh, you like candy, huh? I'm like, ah. Yeah. <laughs> I, <laughs> I do like time, candy. I remember one time. Remember when <laughs> the Amazon River was having the fire? Yeah, and I went to the bargain market and I bought garden hose and enchilada sauce. Okay, so I had this. I still have the garden hose. It's for the it's for the camper. Uh, one of the white ones with the the blue stripes on it. So I thought, okay, well that was cheap. I can get that. And then I got cases and cases of the sauce. So I grabbed the cart and I go to the checkout and I put the hose on the and the conveyor belt. And then I just took a can and I gave her the number. She goes, Oh, are you going to have a party? I go, No, I'm I'm sending this to Amazon. She goes, oh, that's so nice of you to help with the fires. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny because I had all this sauce and a garden hose, and I thought, oh, shoot. <laughs> she thinks, How's it going to help with the fire? I don't know, dude. We're going to pump, pump enchilada sauce. <laughs> that's hose. crazy. Ooh, we got Brittany coming in. Hey, Britt. Hey. How are What's you? What's up, Brittany? Not much. Been shipping all freaking day. That's a good thing. I'd rather ship all day. Yeah, me too. All day. Yeah, I'd be more than happy to ship all day, especially on a day other than a Monday. You know Brain what? I've never shipped anything though. Real quick, I sold I... like thirty-six things on eBay today. Really? Oh, wow, that's a lot. That's good. I don't know if you can see. Uh... I think. What am I at? Probably one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but she's selling a specialty item. You, how you, how did you title that? Did you, you didn't mention anything about any of the? No. No, I just titled it what it is. Okay, cool. Good, good for you. Yeah, I, I basically bought out all of Walmart that was here. So. Yeah. Look, yeah, we're, we're 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 running low here at the house. I might have to take a well, trip to more funny <laughs> <laughs> I'll change you some Mexican candy off of Amazon for some. Oh yeah. Oh, no, I bought seventy nine, and I've sold thirty six of them. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah wow. uh, are you wrapping them so they in case they leak or anything? Or yep, I 
I'm taping the top and yeah. then basically taking like a box or whatever um, and putting it yeah. around yeah. and on top. Like and yeah. then like selling or putting them in the padded flat rate if they're one. Someone bought five of them, so. Nice. Yeah. Now I'm just wondering. Now, hand sanitizer, if, if it's supposed to be killing the germs, I mean, it, they're telling us here that we're not to be like coughing or sneezing at somebody. So I guess it would be the, 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 the bacteria, whatever the viruses are on surfaces, and then you touch it with your hand and you put your hand in your mouth. I mean, is how you would ingest it? Is that their backing behind using the, the sanitizers? I'm not sure. I just know that I heard people are selling out of it, like in stores. So I was like, I'm just mm -hmm. gonna buy it all then. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The um, the virus isn't airborne, um, yeah. so the the only way it really transfers is it's by the air. direct yeah. direct contact with yeah. like you touching a a place that has that virus. Yeah, we we learned today that the the virus itself is a lower respiratory issue, so it's a dry cough versus a wet cough with like sputum or you know phlegm or something like that so like your nasal area and your ears would get yeah, so to... there you go so the, so the jacket i got a ross for i don't know it wasn't that much for 29.9 ampla shipping there you right. go and it had to be only a couple bucks actually hey, maybe might i'll been. get some of that good luck actually it probably was a dollar a dollar or something like that it wasn't much. I wish I could go to Ross and spend a dollar on an item. <laughs> Dude, that's, uh, what I gotta, that's what I got to pay to park the car. <laughs> I'm going to show you a picture of my buggy that I had at Ross. I think I had it in my Instagram. Uh, there's that Yinzer speak. The buggy. The buggy. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me see if I have the photo still. This is my buggy at Ross. Because how much money I spent at Ross? Holy crap! On that buggy, just guess. One hundred and twelve. That was a little Less bit more than. than that. Oh, okay. A little, a little bit more. Well, I was thinking like it's just like a dollar. Oh, wow. I like was been way off. That I was buggy say was twenty chock, bucks. That buggy was chock full, with like all the way full. Well, the, part of the reason my wife threw has a there was a purse in there for thirty dollars that wasn't authorized by me, but she bought it. <laughs> that's, probably, that's another reason why it's a little more. I paid two hundred bucks. $30 was that purse, but like everything was like a dollar, four dollars, three dollars. Like it wasn't not a lot of money. The guy that was ringing me out was like, I never rang it up so many things and saw such little money. Like someone pay out. Like literally, I had like four, I had like four or five garbage bags, like big garbage bags, like, like the real big bag, like not garbage bag, but like the big like shopping bags. And I'm just tossing my trunk. My trunk was all full. And then I had to speed to work because it was it was just like we cut the show off early in the morning, just purposely for me to go, hoping that they would have some good sale, and that was like the best sale possible because they just literally, like as soon as I walked in the store, they were just done tagging everything. But uh, yeah, yesterday I sold a vest overseas to um, Corpus or something. It's like an island somewhere. I don't even know where it's at. I just learned about it yesterday. And uh, I sold that today. So the, the Ross things stuff. we learn, the things we learn while selling things online. So the raw stuff is selling. That's it's good. Going to here, neck of the woods. It's going to California. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, I sold a few to California today. <laughs> Surprisingly, okay. none to Washington. A uh, couple to Georgia too. I don't know if it's like expanding over there. Well, they got the CDC headquarters over there in Atlanta, so they probably got them all on high alert. Yeah. Well, I think they're shipping people into quarantine there. There's, I think, one in Alabama, too, but I don't know. People over here aren't afraid, I guess. But, you know, the funny thing about it is, is it's always been around. It's not what? like it's just something new to, to, to here or there. It's always been there. It's just every now and again we get a rogue, a rogue virus of it. Huh. Been around forever. Yeah. I never knew that. Yeah, the, the the scare factor is that we just don't have a cure for it. That's the problem. So it's a common cold that can be fought out with fluids and rest and things like that. But 
we get this 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 rogue one that they're calling it the whatever i'm not going to give the name but um the 19 if you want to refer to it as that the um the thing is is they don't have a vaccination for it it's crazy i'm on, I'm on one right now just looking up a couple things everything <laughs> says in store only in store only in store only like they're not even shipping this stuff Like well, none of it. How's it. How are you, bud? And there's a uh, shout out to Kelly and Brittany. I don't think I'm sub to Clay. Check that out. And yeah, no, I was, um, I think I was on, or like I wasn't on anything, but earlier this morning, Nate's like thing, and people were talking about. It. I, I don't know if it was. I think it was your morning show where they're they talking about it. Someone was talking about it early this morning. And then um, I was looking at it and I was like, the, you know, someone was saying like, oh, you can't find it anywhere. Um, toilet paper. So, toilet paper and hand sanitizer and like rubbing alcohol or whatever. Can't find it anywhere. Um, and I was like, I wonder. So we went to Walmart this morning and I was like, I'm just going to like look. And I was looking. I was like, there's already like seven of these that sold this morning. Um and so I told my husband, I was like, well, let's just grab a few of them and see how it does. And like, I already listed them and they started selling it. And he's like, we're going back. I was like, okay. And we just like grabbed basically. All yeah, of huh? How much are you getting for those? <laughs> does he, does he sell? No. Yeah. How much do you pay for him, by the way? No, no, he doesn't sell, he but. See, now he's hooked. You, you've, <laughs> trapped, you've trapped another reseller. <laughs> No, he'll, he'll make me do all the work. He he works, uh, he's a manager for Publix, so um, he just does, I didn't buy them at Publix, I bought them at Walmart, and they're selling, I bought them for $3.90 something cents, and they're selling for, what? Wait, so you, you, you cut out, what did you say you sold them for? 38 shipped. Holy <laughs> moly, I'm going right now. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't. What For am I wasting my time here? I gotta go to Walmart. So uh, I'm gonna be ending the show early tonight. <laughs> <laughs> go raid your Walmart for. Find my for, keys around here somewhere. For, I'm gonna ride my scooter to Walmart if I can't find my keys. Yeah, yeah, at first I was putting them on promoted too, and then I was like, let me just take them off promoted and see like if they're still selling yeah. then, and they were. Yeah. I don't think you. I don't think you would have to put something like that. Well, I saw like a few of them when I was searching. Like they're, like the promoted one popped up first, even before like some people are selling them for like twenty five, um, and like mine were there's still some listed for twenty five, and mine are still selling. I don't know why, but yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, I think I'm gonna just stay away from it because I would get, I've already gotten in trouble with eBay once already. Um, my issues. I haven't yet, but maybe it's because also like I have, maybe people are buying or whatever because I have like a good rating and mm -hmm. it's like says I've been on there since 2013, even though I haven't been selling since that long. I've been on there for a long time and they came in and smacked me right on my ass. But they really? didn't do much. They just took my top rating away from me and I was very upset with that because I had worked so hard to get to that. And I have a hundred percent. I've always had a hundred percent since 2007. And it was because I was selling co contact lenses and I did uh, not know they were controlled by the FDA and you couldn't sell them on eBay. But if you type in contact lenses on eBay, there's a freaking boatload of them that come flying out of the left field. And I'm thinking, okay, these are good to go. And then I did the particular brand and I went into the particular prescription and I followed through with all that. Didn't even think to look to see if they were controlled. I uh, just like what they did with me with vapes, though. Oh, I used to I used to buy from a distributor. Of course, I vape all the time. Of course, you know, I basically drink this stuff because I vape so much. And uh, you know, I was getting it for real cheap from a distributor, and uh, you know, that actually services vape shops around my area or whatever. And uh, um, so I'm like, oh, let me see if I could sell in here. And they gave me like a warning. I'm like, why are you warning me? They're like, you can't sell nicotine products. Da, 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 da. So, of course, I tried again because I was a knucklehead. They banned me for seven days. 
Then I waited two months, did it again. Bad meat for two weeks. Then did it again, <laughs> 30 days. Then I'm like, all right, I can't do this anymore. Because <laughs> I'll probably give me the final boot after that, three strikes. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, I haven't I haven't ordered from my distributor since. Because uh, I tried to... I tried to do, um, it was almost like, uh, the reason why I kept trying was because I was trying to get my Shopify store to, to kind of take flight. And what's the better way than slipping a piece of paper saying, hey, instead of buying it on eBay, buy from my Shopify, I'll save you 10% more. Mm -hmm. And then I had it up for like a month, had no sales. But then the last day of my thing, I had three sales go off. I sold the product, I sent it out, and then I just shut it down. I was like, it's not worth it. Yeah, and right. Yeah. Unless it was really going to start gaining traction. Because I was sending out 20 or 30 orders a day. Wow. You know, it was, it was really doing well. I was making probably like 4 or $5 a bottle. Mm-hmm. You know? And, um, but I wanted, I wanted that uh, to gain pretty quick traction without having to advertise. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because if, you start paying for the Shopify store, then you then you're doing like say, like ads, and then some places they won't even let you put ads. Like say for example, like Facebook and stuff, because it's, well, I, I don't know, maybe they would. I don't know. They won't let me post nicotine related stuff on, like even the buy sell trade pages. So I doubt they would let me like push a, a vaping like commercial or whatever you want to call it, a post or anything like that. Right. But, Right. If, you're, if you're paying money to them, maybe they would. Yeah, yeah it was uh, the, with the contact lenses. I think I bought them from a friend from South Carolina off of Facebook. And then she asked, she goes, well, what are you going to use them for? I said, ah, don't worry about it. I got it. And then I get them, and then I immediately put them online. I went through the inventory, checked all the dates, make sure they were all sealed. Everything was good. Um, so I paid a hundred dollars for the box. I must have had probably there was two types of variations. There was like the the, the seven day one, then the thirty day one. The thirty day one I was getting thirty nine ninety nine for, and the seven day one I think it was like twenty bucks. Or like that. Um, so there was a little bit of a markup on that, but I was making damn good money on returns, and I had just sent out two orders, and I had three pending, all within a twenty four close to thirty six hour period, and I was about to just break even. And that's when I got hit. And I was like, are you kidding me? I did not know. So I went and did this full-fledged like research, and that's how it's controlled by the FDA. And I was like calling eBay going, okay, what do I got to do to fix this? He goes, you got to wait it out because you canceled three orders. And I said, well, I canceled three orders because I can't ship them because you're giving me an ultimatum. So I should have let them go. I should have I should have taken them, but they would have held my money. So... See, so they they did they did something similar to me like that where I had uh, I had like four or five orders like in the system I just had to add the tracking because I was drop shipping some of it too. And this mm -hmm. is before drop shipping was like you know where they were like coming after one losing yeah. your top rated and all that. So right. I had um, yeah I woke up and I was uh, you know got suspended and they tried to to hide the the sales on my history. And on my orders, but I had I found the way to go back in there and get the information. So at least I would get those sales off mm -hmm. because I had their money anyway, and mm -hmm. then just ship them out or whatever. Yeah, now, right. Just ship them out so it doesn't kind of guess you because the customer would be calling going, "Hey, where the hell's my product?" Right. Like yeah. eBay, eBay pr probably rather than me refund the money and just just quit what I was doing. Right. But I figured, well, if I'm already in trouble, I might as well make my money off it. <laughs> Nate you, like, I mean? you want this. You want this. It's all yours. <laughs> like you, you paid for it. You get it. Hey, only thing it's, only thing customer it service, like, baby. Oh, right? the, fullest. the only thing it's the only thing that was bad about it was the you know, like normally how you see your tracking, like say you bought this off you bought a product off me. Normally it's your tracking and the orders. Well, the orders on their side disappear too. Like it totally just gone. Mm -hmm. even though the tracking information i put it in you know what i mean even the night before say i put it in all those orders are gone they just poofed like you know how you have like the order numbers like you know 100 100 102 and three in your in your thing or whatever 
you just see a gap of like 40 items gone, you know, because of the, the two days I was on a tear. Yeah, you see all this stuff on, on eBay that people are, uh, you know, you're not supposed to sell or whatever the case is. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, you, you look at sold, you look how many other people are, are listening. And if you didn't know any better, you know what I mean? Like, you just kind of eBay should do a better job letting like the first time I did it, I didn't know, honestly, not nah, other three times, two times, of course I did. Cause they, they warned me, they gave me a, you know, a strike or whatever you want to call it. So on and so forth, but they should do a better job of giving you a list of things that you can't sell. And then also like if you're doing international, cause I called them once and I'm like, okay, like, you know, I'm shipping my international. I was like, your GSP is just way too expensive. Is there a list of things in certain countries that, you know, I should look out for? Or, they sent you, you to know, the USPS on that one, didn't they? No, they just said that they said they didn't have any information. They, they didn't have anything to send me or tell me. They just said to go on the, I think it was like the customs of the country or something. Yeah, yeah, that's what they told me. And I ended up just going to the post office website. Yeah, it's something I was shipping out to Australia, Australia and Japan. Any island, any island or landmass island, it's it's sensitive. So I would just not even put that in your international shipping. I hate to do that to my fellow Aussies, and uh, I can't even send pencils to Australia because of the wood. That's how sensitive it is. Really? Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of craziness with that. So. But yeah, the USPS has a very good list of what you can and can't send. I'm gonna have to print that out and put them on my yeah. wall of info. I mean, you're gonna be printing. Yeah, I was gonna say you're gonna have a lot of papers, bro, because there's a long list on some of those. Countries. Yeah, I guess it is true. I'll need like a binder. Yeah. Put like dividers in it. Okay. Or just keep a tab, or you know, uh, keep a tab available on your desktop to just click it and go to that page and. It's all in alphabetical order. Oh, okay. Yeah, it'd be easier. Yeah, instead yeah. of bookmark. Yeah, there you go. That's not a bad idea. I think I have the one from, I think it was uh, UPS, I think they had one. Mm -hmm. But, um, but yeah, they, they should, they, eBay should have a list of, because I mean, like for GSP stuff, for example, they hide it, for what I understand. For countries that, you know, they're not supposed to buy this or that, from what I, I guess, from what I understand. Because, like, if you're under the GSP, then, you know, you're okay if that happens. They'll, well, they'll cancel it or make sure. Here's a, or prime, here's a prime example of how I learned it when I was posting this on eBay because I cross posted the gel sure, or the sure gel. This is a very inexpensive product that is very desirable. Um, I actually, these are for my own stash. I usually don't use um, too much for my jellies, but I like the can when I'm not sitting here behind a computer or working. Um, I do tomatoes and basically raspberries and strawberries. I had these online and I was lotting them out for, I, I forget what it was, but you could get two of them for X amount of dollars shipped. And I was going to do it internationally. And they did. I did it worldwide. <clears throat> so I got this guy from Australia whose handle was something something chemist so it stood out a little bit and then he kept saying i need a distributor from the united states can you supply me with x amount can you send me a shipment today of the two so we can sample it so i'm like well that's odd and i said first of all i'm not a distributor i'm a reseller here in the united states i only resell this product uh, you know for whatever reason blah 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 so then I started I started thinking about it after I got done talking to the to the gentleman on the chat or the email and I thought let me let me look into why this is so desirable like why can't he get this in Australia? Well, they only sell this in Australia in a can form, uh, different packaging obviously, different company, but there's a chemical in here that they extract from it that prevents them from popping positive for drug paraphernalia. So they can be tested the following day or shortly a period after, and they'll test negative, they'll have negative results or whatever the case may be. And I thought, oh shit, 
I'm not sending this to Australia. So I pulled it. I pulled it from the worldwide uh, international ship, and that's how I learned that. I mean, I don't know. I almost I thought for a second there. I thought I was going to be having some custom agents come into the house. You know what I mean? Yeah, I've, yeah. I've, heard, I've heard of that because uh, back when I was an idiot, I had to pass a, a drug test, and uh, what's it called? Uh, my friend was like, "Hey, just something about some jelly." Or sure jelly or whatever or something jelly and uh i never did it or anything but um yeah that's that's definitely true from what yeah. i what i hear yeah i'm learning new things every day there you go <laughs> i'm learning that i just about saved my ass from having people come to my door <laughs> My so where's the where's this up. listing lobster? <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> yeah, I don't have it up anymore. I pull, I sold out. I only have uh, one, two, three, four, five, seven more boxes left, and I'm keeping it. Um, thing that's um, thing that first thing would have popped to my mind if someone was, you know, basically talking like that or whatever, I'd have been like, why is this person looking for a bulk bulk connection mm -hmm. from eBay? Like looking for that, you know what I mean? That's that's what flagged it. Yeah. Those, key, those key, those key things like that should send messages through your neurons, going, "This ain't right. This ain't right. This ain't right." And that's what forces me to look into it. Especially something over, overseas, because uh -huh. there's got to be somebody in their area that can either acquire that or sell right. something similar. So it, yeah, definitely. I literally went on and probably spent some time on it, but I literally went on websites. For grocery stores in Australia to see if the item was sold and found that they do sell it, but it's in a different kind of like form that they uh, provide it for the for the consumers. Can you imagine getting caught in customs with a suitcase full of jelly? <laughs> <laughs> like, where are you going, sir? Australia. I like J J E L L O. It'd be like it'd be like the movie Blow where they're walking through customs. Or marijuana was it marijuana at first right and it was yeah marijuana. he had like he had like 600 Miami. like 600 like pounds of weed or whatever yeah like <laughs> you're walking through with your jaw in your suitcase <laughs> then the next 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 time was like he had a plane full of uh of bam bam <laughs> yeah right i love yeah. that movie that was a good movie that was an awesome movie my favorite oh, scene is where they had all that money and they didn't know where to put it all. Yeah. And they, they bought that house just to hold the money. They're like, I think I need a big, I think we're going to need a bigger boat. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was insane. We're, we're out of room. Did you check the back closet? Yep. Full. <laughs> yeah. And they're talking about the set of counting bills or weighing them. Yeah. Right. No, that should be <laughs> 2.5 mil. Yeah. I think it's three. Yeah. I'm going to check again. <laughs> that's crazy and, it, and what's weird about it is it's based on the true events man yeah yeah what's I think this he movie just, um, what's that? blow yeah with uh what was it uh, uh johnny depp johnny depp i was gonna say <laughs> captain jack <laughs> i'm working on my my movie like bucket list I yeah that's a definitely a must watch blow okay 2001 yeah. Yeah, it's an oldie. It's a good that was one. a that was a good year. Based on based on true events. I I'm think he just sure passed away diverse. too. I heard. I think. Oh, the original. Um, yeah, the, the guy that they did the movie from. Yeah, probably like so. I mean, he, it was based he, in the seventies and shit. So I would yeah, imagine he was, he's probably up there now. He got out. I, I think he got out, and then like a year or two later, he died or something like that. Hmm. Wow, I'm looking at some of the screenshots from this movie, and I'm seeing the money stacks. I see what you mean. Yeah, I'm sure if you go on like YouTube, you can. Yeah, you can get it. You flip. can get a just of the the bulk of the movie. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I've been trying to. This is actually interesting. A segue into. I've been trying to um, go through the backlog of movies that I've missed right throughout history, and there's something really special. I guess about young Al Pacino movies. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is, but um, I was watching. And I know this is a less popular one, but I was watching clips from uh, 
I think it's called a Dog Day Afternoon or something. If you know what I mean, it's the one where he's he's going to like rob he's going to like rob a bank, right? Young Al Pacino and um, some other guy. I forget I forget his name. And it's like it's where the the Attica scenes from. If you know that, he's like mm-hmm. Attica yelling out in the crowd. But I mean, like, just like the energy and like the different roles that he was playing at the time. Like, he went from a nervous gay bank robber to, you know, a gangster. Uh, all, other things Al Pacino does, you know, it's crazy. Isn't he on a Netflix special now or something like that? Or he's doing Netflix? I have no idea. Yeah, I think he's. I love Al Pacino. But I missed so much, man. I missed so many movies. You had, you had to have seen Scarface, right? Uh, you nope. say you missed movies, dude. What? You're 22 years old. <laughs> You're young. You you miss- miss- oh, yeah. Okay, get up. Get get your get your pad out. And put Scarface to the top of that because that was oh, probably yeah. one of the best <laughs> yeah. gangster All movies right. ever. Yeah. Gotta Look, see I Scarface. I if you're gonna Scarface. be a reseller on eBay, you gotta see Scarface because that's all about entrepreneurship, right there. Yeah, <laughs> right? literally. That's literally, like that's like yeah. the first day of reselling 101. That should be the first video that should be shown in the academy. <laughs> There's <laughs> an academy. I missed yeah, that there one. is now. <laughs> when, when someone so, when someone gives you a, after you watch that movie, after someone gives you a low offer on eBay, you'd be like, "What do you think I am? Some type of baggage handler?" <laughs> I love that movie, man. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, my real friend. Honestly, you can you can list all the movies in the world. I, I've seen very few. You know, I've been watching Secret Life of Pets two on repeat for the past couple of weeks because that's all my son <laughs> wants to watch. Yeah. So, listen, movies are have not been uh, not been something I've been. Really, you know, I created a divorce over the movie "What About Schmidt" with Jack Nicholson in it. There was a there's a scene in the movie where he's laying there, and it's about a guy who just goes through life, you know, day in and day out, same thing over and over. Kind of reminds me of Groundhog Day with Bill Murray, where every day is the same, you know, same routine. You know, you do the same thing every day, and it's you know, it's tedious. But and what about Schmidt? Um, with Jack Nicholson, he's laying in bed and he's talking to himself and he's like, who is this old lady laying next to me? You know, cause they don't talk anymore. They don't do anything anymore. They've, they've separated themselves and then you got, they're still married. And that made me think one day I'm going to be like that guy. I need to change things up in my life. And I filed for a divorce like a week after watching that movie. Oh my God. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And I probably, it's the best thing I could have done for her. It's the best thing I could have done for her. She's happy. She's, well, I don't know if she's happy, but she got remarried. You know, good for her. I got remarried. Good for me. I got more issues now than I had before, but that's, I I chose. When's the new one due? Uh, July 26th, I believe. Oh, you're coming up? Yeah. Summer baby. Yeah. Yeah. Still having a hard time remembering when it actually happened. See, I've heard that's uh that's prime time to be pregnant though during the winter, where you can like bundle up in uh, warm clothes and stuff. Yeah. Uh, my fiance was pregnant all during the summer. Yeah, she was hating life. Like, this, she was like, "This is awful." <laughs> <laughs> my, my wife. So to have a summer baby, you got to get awful. together right around Halloween time. So. <laughs> That's exactly what happened to my wife. All for all for all three of them. January, February, and March. Yeah. Yeah, mine's January and February, and I lived in Florida, so there was no winter. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, we just had a birthday today. We got two more this month. We got uh, we'll have two in July. So wow. it's like bam, 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 bam. It's baby time. Hmm. Yeah, that's what happens. I got a very, very beautiful, gorgeous wife. I should have told her to stop putting makeup on. <laughs> for makeup. It's all your fault. <laughs> you it's all my fault for buying the makeup. Yeah, it's not her fault for putting it on. Yeah, didn't she just buy like a whole uh, box from an auction? Yeah, and she oh, took like uh, she took like a third of it. <laughs> 
Yeah, I posted, uh, I've got it all on there. The only thing I have left to do is some leftover stuff that she wasn't sure on, but some just lipsticks um, that we, we haven't put, but they're multiple quantities. So that'll be like one or two listings there and some other little things that she wasn't sure on. But yeah, just that, everything else is on. We've only sold two things off of it yet. And we spent $90 on an auction. Uh, shipped and I sold one thing for seventeen dollars and one thing for twenty six ninety nine. So we're not quite there. We're almost halfway there. I keep getting those uh, prompts though from eBay. Uh, drop the price on you know how you get your little prompts and then you sit there and you look at it and you're like God if I drop it anymore I might as well just throw it on the front curb and give it away for free. Right. I don't even listen to any of those like. Like they do a, help. Like, they do help. But some of the price suggestions, I, I'm thinking, no, I'm not dropping it five dollars. Macari's not, not on their price suggestions. What's that? Macari, like what yeah. they think things should be valued for is like half the amount that it's actually valued for. Oh wow. Which sucks. Like if you're like new to reselling and you're just posting things on there and you think like maybe that's what it should be, and it's not. Well, you know, if you look at it from a car's point of view, they're trying to encourage people to do more sales because they make a commission off every transaction. So it's money yeah. in the bank for them, right? I mean, probably, but they I get mean, more. Just, yeah, they get more, but it's sitting longer because it's not selling. So maybe yeah, they're at, maybe the analytics is looking at it going, okay, this item is sat for 90 days. Maybe we suggest a lower price. And, you know, because I've gone in. When they, when, you know, when you do your listings and you see the trending price that kind of is right above your price of your item when you do your revisions. Yeah. And you click that, and you click that to see what the other ones are selling for. Half the time, it's not the product. The other time, the prices are way off kilter because I would have already done my research to find out what I'm going to price it for. I'm not going to wait to that moment of the, the listing to hit that trending price. I don't know. Some of those prices are just ridiculous. Yeah. Well, like for example, I do, a pair of Tory Birches, and they think I should do forty-seven, and I have free shipping on, um, and that they'll sell easily for like a hundred in probably a week. Mm -hmm. So it's better to hold on. Yeah, but I'm saying like someone that might just be selling them, like yeah, they might not know that. Yeah. 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 Hmm. Sounds like they just want more people to start using Mercari. Yeah. <laughs> That's an, that's probably another reason why they they rather have more sales for less money to bring more buyers, and they yeah. make more sales more often. So that's kind yeah, of like they what they're going for, right? Yeah. But like how eBay has their suggested prices, and they'll they'll show you like similar ones. Like I think Picard does it as a brand and a whole, not like necessarily like specific listings and keywords and stuff. Like I think they just take the brand and think what the brand should sell for. You know. Like, I don't think they actually get, like, as, like, complicated as eBay gets, which is better if you're, you know, selling and you actually want, like, a fair value for it. I think Macari kind of does it just based off of the brand. Hmm. Yeah, I've only, I've only put a couple listings on Macari, so I haven't really seen the full-fledged... Did they ever fix your Vendu? No. <laughs> Vendus. I messaged them to, again today. And I'm like, well, yeah, what, what are we going on? What's going on, fellas? Like, nothing. Really? I understand. Yeah. Yeah, we're not supposed to get back to you after like a meeting or something. Yeah, they're like, well, we'll get our sales team on as soon as, as, soon as possible. As soon as we're in a sales meeting right now. I'm like, okay, great. So they like I understand, are. like their company, they're busy. They have other customers, and then yeah, they're I, I mess like not paying yet, and they're like, "Yeah, we're not going to help him." Well, that's that's the whole thing. Like my whole mindset was, okay, I'm use my five free listings because I got five uh, five back every every month. You get five for free. So I was like, I'm gonna do my five, and then I'm gonna buy the twenty nine ninety nine package, and then get a hundred and twenty five more because I will get most of my store cross you know cross listed. So I'm on I'm on listing one, not even two, not three, 
I'm four. One. I remember. And it's like, it's just sharded all over itself. That's what basically happened. I only used it when it was like, or when it was free or whatever. And then like did all my listings, cross posted my like max amount that I could on eBay and then canceled before it. Because it's like easy if you're actually like listing from your phone just to cross list it then. But like it was good for when I needed to get like a bulk when I wasn't selling as much on eBay. Yeah, I like I missed I totally missed out on it. I had a lot going on. And um Anthony really got a lot of stuff cross listed for free. Uh, with it, and, um, so he was. It's part of the reason why he feels uh, such a strong. Uh, about it. Yeah, he has like a pact with them basically now, <laughs> which I can understand. <laughs> you know, it worked really well for him, so uh, you yeah, know he's gonna he's gonna like it and cheer it on. But it's almost become a fun, funny like uh, like back and forth between me and him now. So. So it's 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 funny just to bring it up among other things. It's content in the morning time, dude. You guys can yeah. do pros and cons. That's um we're trying to um I don't know when this is gonna be where we're trying to get a show together where we we'll bring someone on with list perfectly, then he's gonna do Vendu and then uh I have a buddy of mine that will do uh, cross listed, which is the other one, and then we'll go over each all three of them live. Then do and listen perfectly. Have one of them are like a group of guys too, and the other one are ladies. Like list perfectly, their creators are females, and then then do their creators are males. Oh yeah, yeah. They we it wouldn't be the creators. We are having Vendu's creators on uh, later in the month. They okay. said they'd be on the show, so maybe they'll then you uh, can, uh, fix, fix my problem live. Then, huh? <laughs> fix your problem live? Yeah. <laughs> hold, them, hold, them, hold them responsible? It, it, w it was just really funny, too, because they're like, you know, we're having a lot of issues or whatever. I'm like, well, don't you guys see that it's being a big problem? I'm like, you guys just started. Well, we're, we have so many. There we go. Money. <laughs> Everybody's chimed in like, oh, that's who great. is it? <laughs> <Sold another> one. <laughs> when, when eBay's just going wild with the uh, with the madness going on, you know it's uh, you know it's good right now. Yeah. <laughs> just think if I had some of that stuff on Amazon, man. Holy moly! I know. I was thinking that too. I was like, oh, if you look on Amazon, they're going for a lot too. Especially if you can like find the little ones. I didn't see any of like the little. Yeah, and little travel size. Dark, that but... size would be stationary for like a house office, uh, whatever. But like the little hand travel ones would be good because we oh, have a big one like that in the car. Bigger, like, com like business companies and yeah, schools and all that. I'm about yeah. to uh, I'm about to raid uh, Dollar General or no Dollar Tree. They have those little tree packs. I'll go in there and. Uh, I'll just get a buggy and just start dumping them in I there. I should have went to Dollar Tree. It's right next to freaking Walmart. Yeah. They sell the the Dollar Tree sells the tree the three pack ones. I have to be careful though when uh, Craig's around because I can't um, tell him he like lives in uh, Land Shark. He lives like literally in the same town as me. Oh, you're safe. He's in he's in bed now. Yeah, oh, I know. A, That's he's in all folks home. He's all right. That's why we did. I saw him earlier. And I was like, "All right, he's not here. I can, I can pop my face on him." I always care with him about that. So if he's in here, I'm just kidding, Craig. That was always like an ongoing joke when, when uh, he used to, he he used to do a morning show. People used to say that, so it was pretty funny. <laughs> we would See, talk no. about him and eating pudding at at the, you know, for snack and. <laughs> See now, I'm thinking about this whole uh, san hand sanitizer thing, and with my luck, I'd end up buying up a whole bunch of hand sanitizer. Yeah, and that's all. And then, and then, next thing I know, like the hype's over, <laughs> and the hand sanitizer. Well, it's always going to be. Up. I honestly think it's always <laughs> going to be 
it's always going to be an issue with influenza regardless whether it be the common day i mean here's here's something here's some just some just ridiculous knowledge we have had more people die in the last year from the common flu than the, the current situation right so it's only because there's the scare of not having a vaccination but yeah hand sanitizer i mean it's up to you. I mean, I have some in the emergency evacuation kits. It's just with those little packets. That's how I, I know about that. So the Dollar Tree is my go-to store for survival stuff. And then Walmart. For the really? Hand sanitizer expires, Star City Picker? Yeah. yeah. This one has the expiration of um, January 2020. Oh. Wait, so January, like, January 2020? Mm-hmm. I just found That means they're expired already. What? You said January 2020. Yeah. Or 2022, sorry. Oh, oh okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. Well, the same mark, the I, go I, to another Walmart real quick and get some, <laughs> get some good ones. I thought we caught her in a moment there. She was like, oh, no. no <laughs> I, thought you, I thought you were Your busting. Face? You said 20, like, well, like, 22, but... <laughs> no wonder they had so much at Walmart. Yeah, <laughs> no wonder they still had these on the shelf. <laughs> I messed up, guys. Uh, yeah, 20, I think majority of them are January 2022, and then I have one that's 12-21. So, I don't know. Like, a few of them were like that, but they seem to last for not as long as you would think hand sanitizer lasts for. Like, I feel like I have a, half a bottle laying around the house that's probably three years old or something. Mm -hmm. I honestly think, like, stuff like that's not going to expire. I mean, I mean, it might, but it's all it because might just of manufacturers. Be a yeah, it, yeah it loses effective. its potency. Like, this is 99.99%, .9 so maybe after that, it's like 50%. Yeah. I, don't I mean, know. the only thing that's actually controlled by the FDA or any kind of agency that deals with consumption of goods is baby formula. That's the only thing that the government will snap down on you. All that other shit that we see, milk, bread, whatever, hand sanitizer, freaking diapers. It's all because the manufacturer is saying, by this date, y'all, this is the prime peak that this product will provide what we guarantee. Other than that, beyond that, you're on your own. That's all that is. See, I feel like with hand sanitizer, I mean, it's it's not something that rots or anything. It's it's a sanitization agent. You know? Yeah, it's, it's just, like Nate it, it said. Just, it, it just weakens its, its formula. It's yeah, it probably goes down by like 10% a year after that or whatever. Yeah. You know what I mean? I it, wonder it if it doesn't do it a lot. I wonder if it's less the because I I can't because if you to look at like star sand or like sanitizer for like equipment, I mean that stuff doesn't really go bad. I I can only imagine that it's maybe the gel that they're referring to. Like maybe right. it, if it's a gel sanitizer, maybe it would lose some of maybe, it. So. Maybe it turns into water. Basically. I mean, gasoline, <laughs> gasoline even has an expiration date on it. We just don't know when it is. And I always was baffled by that with the motors and boats and everything you know, and buying used cars and thinking, oh, okay, I don't smell the potency of the gas. But then again, you know, it comes from the freaking ground from like millions and billions of years ago from these little, <laughs> you know, fossilized organisms that they've processed. And I was like, how does it expire? It's already expired. <laughs> <laughs> but. Yeah, everything has a has a timeline on it, dude. It's amazing. Look at that. We're we're seeing the process. Right? Yeah. Look Pretty making that. making them dolls. Yeah. Yeah. I make the the like Frankenbox so then I can put it in the pad. Hey, Frankenbox is rock. So you're gonna send it uh flat rate. Mm-hmm. How it's much do they weigh? Bucks. Yeah, it's only gonna be what seven bucks, seven, seven. seven. Yeah, it's like seven and change. Yeah, seven thirty. How much do they weigh, Brett? Uh, two and a half pounds. Yeah. Morning, Georgina. So 
up, Georgina? Good morning. morning to, good morning to England and all of its lovely chaps. <laughs> Top of the morning to you, darling. Oh boy. Yeah. I'm surprised that fits in a in a uh, flat flat uh, padded fly rate like that. It's legal. Uh, I kind of taped the top. <laughs> Finessing the game. Yes. I was actually I went to one um because I didn't have any padded flat rates left um and I ordered some or whatever and they haven't come yet but um. I went to one post office because I called ahead and I was like, hey, do you guys have um, any padded or whatever? And she gave me, I think, 20 of them. Um, and so I was trying to do it in there. And she's like, if that doesn't fit or whatever, you can't go there or you can't ship it. And I was like, okay. So I went to the other one that like I'm more familiar with the people there. Because if I tape it over, it's just like literally the top of it. If I tape it over, you can't even tell. And they didn't even like blink twice when I brought it there. That's why I use clear tape when I have to do that. Well, you can kind of stretch that material just a little bit. If it's only like a quarter or a half inch. Have, yeah, there you go. That works too. But works she saw great. me doing it is why she was being. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love people's UK accents. Right. Righty, righty then. All right. So here we go. We're going to entertain Georgina and the... Uh, the English morning chaps from they get out of bed already. They can't get out of bed. Well, if we're gonna entertain, we might as well bring the nightlife back. Yeah, what? Whoa! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or we can, one of them. Or we oh, can get the. Uh, or we can get Mister. We can get Mister Burns in here. Uh oh. <laughs> There's your boy. My boy. Or we can just go real elegant. There you go. Love that piano, by the way, Nate. How Very long sway. <laughs> yeah, right. I got that at a got dollar. A fireplace in the middle of the house there. I got that for a dollar at the the piano for a dollar at Goodwill. <laughs> dollar day. It's one of my like, best. It cost more online than the piano did. One, one of my like best the, uh, finds. The reseller Ty Lopez. Look at this house, guys. <laughs> I'm a six figure reseller. Yeah, don't you don't you want to uh, buy don't one you... of my courses or something? Like, no. <laughs> now, that's probably what they did in a lot of those. Like, you, you see these people, like, look at this Lamborghini. It's like a just like they're not really touching or anything. It's like just chilling behind them. It's like, <laughs> you see my Lambo back there. I got that from reselling. Let me, let me find some better and another funny picture. I make six hundred k a year at the thrift store. You can too. Just buy my course. Yeah. Right. I don't know. I don't. I don't necessarily approve of those courses. I think all that information that they're giving you, you can easily find online. Yeah. Go to some Facebook group, and you know, you got people that will sit there and just give you the world, and you can learn so much from it. Hey like, man, everyone has a hustle. If people are willing to buy it, yeah, that's very I can't, true. I can't blame them. No. No, I can't either. That's I just won't fall into it. Look at it go. <laughs> like, go, Brick, go. Go, Brick, go. You can do it. Look at that like, thing. Dang. Bravo. <laughs> a lot of hustle there going on. She's got the See? scissors in the, in, the, in the teeth there. She's just doing it. Oh, wow. Get... <laughs> See that's like that's like what Izzy does with tape. I'm I'm like the civilized person with the scissors, and he's like, "You're too slow," and grabs it out of my hand and just starts yeah, biting off pieces of tape. Him. Like I'll be honest, I I've paid for like patrons or classes, but they were like like twenty dollar ones or nothing crazy. That's you know how you I mean? got like the, twenty bucks a month. That's when how I you first got the skill set to get that house. All right, or all this yeah, money. Look at <laughs> I just got stacks behind me. I just lay. I just go like this and lay all my money. There you go. <laughs> there's the uh, there's the scene from Blow right there. All right. That one matches like your everyday. I'm hustling over. 
Every day I'm hustling, 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 hustling. Who does that? Uh, Rick Ross. Cat. Rick Ross. Oh, the Rick Cat Ross. Williams one? Cat oh, Williams. You know. Yeah, we got that. Or, you know, I'm outside on the street. There's a house. <laughs> Brick wall. Four in the club tonight. All right. Hey, listen, man. It's it's one thirty five here. I gotta uh, I gotta probably hop off and try and get some sleep. But I appreciate hanging out with you. Oh no worries, dude. Appreciate it. Fun. Yeah, I appreciate it. So I'll I'll see you guys around. Hopefully you can find a replacement for me. But I'll see you guys later. No worries. Awesome. No worries. Have a good one. I'll uh, I'll keep you posted right. on the lobster outfit and uh, yes. see where we go with that. I need, to, I need to know the lobster outfit and the outcome. Yeah, yeah. I'll Once pay homage to you, my friend, for certain. <laughs> all right, all right. I'll see you guys later. All right, brother. Later, Take brother. care. Peace out. Bye. All right. So he came out with this great idea of me getting into a lobster suit. And he was thinking of doing like the lives or whatever. And I even said, I, you know, I'm going to take it to the next level. I'm going to go thrifting in it. Or I'm also going to do like a, a, a video of me standing on the corner with a YouTube sign. that says, please subscribe to my channel while in a lobster suit. So, something, some, some content to add to the craziness of my channel. I always think of like the dancing lobsters from the Amanda show, but... You might. I don't know if you remember that show. No, but I can just imagine. Like, yeah, she had like three dancing lobsters. Um, Amanda Bynes back when it was like uh, all that on Nickelodeon and whatnot. That's like my age, I guess. So, what kind of car did you buy today, Nate? Oh, just some little. I got this yeah. at the Dollar Tree. Uh, at the Dollar Tree. Yeah, I got. I bought it out when I was outside the Dollar Tree. I was like, eh, I'll just buy this. I just throw it in the buggy. <laughs> Kai was gonna donate it, and I was like, yeah, you know, I'll take yeah. it for two bucks. Yeah, yeah, it's for me and the family on our Sunday after uh, afternoon outing. It's up there with the, the 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 piano in my living room. Yeah, right, Kai. You got some great deals up there, bro. Right? Or did you did you carry the piano and you put it on top of the car when you bought it? Right? You just no, put I it on just, top. I just put it on my back and walked home. <laughs> oh shit! Oh god! Oh. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to hit up Walmart. I'm off tomorrow, so <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking about going right now. <laughs> it's gonna be. Don't sell on Amazon. Don't sell on eBay. I'll, I'll put them. I'll put them up for. Would you say you're somewhere thirty? I put up for. I have a thirty-nine right now. Thirty-nine. I put up. Thirty-nine is a little bit of promoted. I will put up for thirty-nine seventy-five. I'm gonna go thirty-nine sixty-nine. <laughs> nah, I wouldn't do that too, bro. Now, I might put them on. I might check and see Amazon though. That's what I'm saying. Put them up on Amazon. You'll sell yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. I'm well, see, out. I think that like I'm not engaged in. It's Healthy gonna be beauty. Good. Yeah. Topicals. Topicals. Um yeah, it's gonna be some health and beauty stuff sometimes. Yeah. Just buy it. They might not get you because they have probably sold out of them. Well, if they have any, if I go and they have any, I'll just I'll get some for the house for sure. But I will scan it to see what it's going for and I will look into it. So the joy of having the ability to look on Amazon and go into individual accounts and see how many they have in hand is nice because on eBay you can't. Well, you can, I guess, but you really don't know the true number. Of course, you don't know that with Amazon either, but you can get, kind of get like a ballpark. Equate, um, it's selling for forty four ninety nine on Amazon. Mm. The one I have. Mm -mm -mm. That's crazy for less than a four dollar investment. Wow! Look at Nate. He's he's like, yeah, he's counting that money Amazing. already. I can get this car behind me in red now. <laughs> right. It's only available from third party sellers, it says. Yeah. I'm surprised because Walmart and Amazon have very similar prices on certain items. Hey, Nate, look out behind you. Oh, uh, it's just a bear. 
<laughs> Shane says I need need a fourth behind me, so I figured, what the heck? I might as well pick this uh, one with the bear. Oh. I love this this green screen, man. It's fun to play with. Yeah. It only really um, looks like there's like one person. I don't know how to look, but selling it. It's been selling it on Amazon. You can go. Is it other sellers? It just says only available from third party, and then it says, "Oh, hold on." Usually, whenever they have, it's only available third party. It I mean, it's like the from KMAC. Through. MK discount. Oh, that's the seller's that. store name or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's the? Let me see my phone. What's the skew on the on the on the one you got? Can you scan it? <laughs> uh, maybe if I, not to the computer. You won't be able to. No. No. I'll tell you what, does it start with the first number over here? This yeah. Six, Six, eight, one. One, three. One, two. Four, seven. Six, six. Nope, didn't come up. Oh, it's a five at the end, sorry. Uh, I just deleted it. You got to tell me again. Six, <laughs> one. No, six, eight. Six, eight. One, one. One one. Three one. Three one. Two four. Two four. Seven six. Seven six. Six five. Six five. Choir's approval. It's in beauty. Why would they put that in beauty? I don't know. It was right. And topicals. Yeah, I'm gated. That figures. Can't you like four. request or no? I request it, but it's always like you need an invoice. If you see certain categories, like a whole category, like beauty or topicals or, you know, stuff like that, um, it's a whole category. So what happens basically is, um, oh, what's it called? Like, as soon as you see that, that means basically you need a wholesale thing to get ungated with it, which... For me to get a wholesale one with that, it'd probably take forever to get my order. Yeah. And by the time my order comes in, I order like say four pallets of it or something crazy. The the, the whole craziness would be over, and I'm stuck with uh, four pallets of hand sanitizer. Well, I mean, you could always return it to Walmart. That's like, it says two. It says two sellers, but there's only one selling it. That's what I saw too. I wonder if I can. I was looking at one. I tried to auto, try to auto request, and it 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 sends you to that need an invoice. Yeah. Selling it for fifty bucks, man. Forty nine ninety nine. Forty nine forty nine. I found some of that Purell Advanced Aloe hand sanitizer, and I'm all approvals for that too. It, it always baffles me with Amazon. It's like. I need approval to sell shampoo, but I don't need approval to sell food that you ingest. Yeah. Like it's okay to sell a product to put on your hair or not. Okay. But then it's okay for you to drink products and eat consumables. Yeah. I guess, I guess the way they look at it is like products like that, you know, it's like basically a chemical reaction to work or use. You know what I mean? Like, say, like yeah. a hand sanitizer or, like, right. you get, like, a dandruff shampoo or something. Right. Like, it's all chemicals that's reacting to your skin. And with that, you know, people are allergic to some things, just like food, too. So, yeah, you're right. Like, it's like, well, food's okay, but why not yeah, this yeah. or that? So Yeah, it's weird. It's very strange. Maybe very because, strange. like, food's sealed and, like, shampoos aren't. I don't know. I, don't know. I guess I guess they they I guess they um they basically feel that if the person is allergic to a food item, they actually would know about it. Yeah, maybe it is because or a lot of stuff is controlled, not unlike food. Yeah. Yeah. Like if, if I was like for like if I was allergic to say like I'm I'm low lactose intolerant, so you know like if I'd eat something with cheese or something, of course I'm gonna try and stay away from that, or my wife's gonna be upset. Because I'll be blowing her out all night. <laughs> like, 
Um, yeah. Well, that's awesome. Now, well, uh, I won't be selling it, so don't worry, Britt. You can make your money. You can't buy it out there in California. It's probably already gone. Yeah, it's true. It's very true. <laughs> we we've been looking for masks, and they're all sold out. That's Just I, I should have purchases. capitalized on that a while ago. I haven't looked to see, but I know like a couple months ago, CVS or Walgreens, one of them had them like buy one get one free or something. Um, and I didn't, I didn't, cause I, I didn't think it was going to blow up as much, you know, but now here it is still kicking around. So, mm -hmm. and but, then, you, you know, know it, it makes it 10 times worse than what it, yeah. you know, is. but it is something though that you should always consider for your own safety of your own well being and your family yeah. is, you know, when stuff like this hits, hits the, hits the States. It's not a joking matter because we're not prepared. I mean, look at yeah. us now. We're not prepared to protect ourselves. I mean, what if they tampered with our water? What if, if something tampered that came across in the air? Uh, you know, we're screwed. We really are. I mean, 9-11 is a prime example. You know? yeah. So I think, you know, preparing yourself and being ready for the worst case scenario. And grilling. I was giving grilling a hard time the other day. I was like, what if a volcano in Yellowstone blows up and the trade winds push all that ass over over to uh, Long Island? What are you going to do? Is I ain't worried about it. I'm on a floating island in the uh, in the ocean. <laughs> like, no, dude, <laughs> you're going to be affected by it. Oh. Well, hey guys, I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to go to bed early. I got little ones that uh, haven't said goodnight to me yet, and they're probably waiting in the front already asleep. But. I need to pay homage like as a father. Time. I was like, just late, but <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I appreciate you guys stopping in. I'm going to cut it loose, and I, I want to say uh, uh, hi to everyone in the chat for everyone stopping by today. And we're going to do this again tomorrow. So keep an eye out, and we'll do something else. Hopefully, I can be more productive. I only got only got one thing on there today. So there he is, half a day grilling. Anyway, guys, I'm going to go and say goodnight to my kids. So thanks for showing Bye, up. Bye, everyone. Hey, see you, Brittany. Good Bye. luck, Brett. Take care, guys. Have a good night, guys. Take see care. See you, everyone. Later. Bye. Peace. All right. Well, that ends today's little chat. Thank you guys for coming in. I appreciate it. Um, for Nate, Brittany, Grillin, and then we had Brittany in today. Um, had a lot of good information that was shared. Uh, a lot of knowledge there. Um, hope everyone's taking note of what's going on around them. As you can see, Brittany is capitalizing on some certain items and um, if the supply and demand fits the shoe. Take advantage of that situation. And, um, you know, hey, you may have learned some things in this in this situation or this chat tonight. You may not have. I don't know. Maybe it was entertaining. Maybe you were doing something you shouldn't have been doing. I don't know. Don't care. <laughs> but anyway, hey, they love the, uh, the bear thing, but the, the car was Probably my favorite. Um, next to the money stacks. So um, anyway, guys, I'm going to say peace out. Good night. And uh, always get that money. Take care. Have a good one.